Uh, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Um, it's my absolute pleasure uh, to be with you today. Uh, and of course, um, for the end of the year, which to kill off all events and to stop us from uh, being able to do most things that we want to do. So uh, just, just to give you a bit of a, a pretext for this. So, so my name's Mitch. I'm the global ambassador with Black Top Rum. Uh, I've got some very, very special guests uh, tonight who we're going to be speaking with and, and, and talking to about the rum. But really the, the main thing and the main thing I'm excited is, uh, is that we're, we're able to bring you all here to the audience and have you come. So I believe, uh, I believe uh, thanks, <laughs> um, I believe you guys could all have your taste intact. I know there's one or two taps along the way, but we've got some other rum at home that you can enjoy and pull together. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Someone mentioned this important now. Can everyone hear me okay? Thumbs John. Up. Yeah, John. choppy. We're, make, we're making do. All right. All right. Everyone's on mute. He's not going to hear anyone. Is it one of, are we on mute? No, we're not. Oh, we're not. Oh, it's like, no, we're, not. <laughs> oh, we're a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> Tra trailer's muted. <laughs> so, so you've just got you've got some background noise from trailer coming through. That's okay. We're just going to talk over the top like we would if we were just that trailer. <laughs> um, it's... Uh, <laughs> Let's see if this is... It's, it's so important. It, it, I, I want to introduce why we've, we've wanted to host this with Trailer and why it's so important to me. So, uh, so Trailer is the bar that started my rum journey. Uh, you know, I grew, up in, I grew up in Essex where I thought rum was a sailor, Jerry and Coke. And uh, that's all I'd really seen before. And then uh, I, got, I got the opportunity uh, to work at, you know, a bar that... I, I didn't even know how good it was when I began. You know, I got a chance to work with the team at the time was Jim Wrigley, Audrey Hands, Josh Haynes back there. Uh, obviously had Sly running the ship. And it's, and it's just, for me, that was the, the place that introduced me to the, what the world of rum is about and how good rum can be. Um, and so it was so important for me that we, we host this event uh, with with trailer tonight, and um, you know it is my it's my favourite rum bar in the world. I, I I will always be biased, but you know you never forget your first love. So um, so it's it's my honour to to bring trailer into it tonight and to bring all of you guys in. I know some of you guys got the little virtual background we sent through. We we're like, oh, this will be cheesy and really cool to have everyone in the bar together. So thanks to everyone who got into it. Um, we wanted to bring everyone together to look before the end of the year. Obviously, we've got a new rum and we want you to taste it. Uh, but more than that, it just really sucks that we can't have a party and, and be all together in the same room. So we wanted to try and create as close as possible an experience as that for you tonight. And we've got uh, just over 90 people in the room now, uh, which is, it's so, so, so good to have you all together. Um, I want to introduce all of our all of the people that we have here tonight um, in amongst in amongst the crowd here, we have uh, some bartenders who actually joined us for the 50th anniversary this year. Uh, they, they helped us and made some absolutely outstanding cocktail videos uh, from all around the world. And all the bartenders who joined us, I can see a few on this screen already. We've got Mia, we've got, uh, we've got Scotty there and Dirty Dick. We've got Connie from Milk and Reading. Uh, there's, a, there's a few of them, so many different screens going on there. Cecile from Flying Dutchman. Um, so, hey everyone, hey, and welcome to all of our 50th cocktail bartenders from across Europe. Thank you so much for your amazing videos, they're amazing. Um, Craig from Trailer, hey Craig, yo, welcome. Um, <laughs> we, also, uh, we also invited and we, we opened it up and a lot of you uh, signed up because um, normally with these kind of events, sometimes there's like a, a, a bit of a VIP guest list and the same people always get invited and we really wanted to open this up and make it anyone from the industry across the UK could join in on this because I know for me when I was starting my rum journey um, you know when I was a bar back and just starting off as a bartender you know it's like those those kind of sessions brought me in they made me fall in love with rum and we really want to give that opportunity to everyone whether you're a bar owner or a brand ambassador or someone starting off uh, just now you know you're all all very welcome tonight so and um, with all that aside, let me please introduce our speakers and guests for tonight. Um, so we have, uh, I guess we'll, we'll start with the, the founder of Black Top Rum, uh, the owner of the brand. We have Sakinda Singh, who's dialing in from his very Hi own guys. rum room. Hey, Sakinda. <laughs> Welcome. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. Hi, guys. 
Thanks for joining us. Hello. Hey, man. So, so everyone, so Sikinder Singh is the, the founder of Black Top Rum. Uh, he's also the owner of Whiskey Exchange. Um, he is uh, one of the most important people in the, in the spirits world. And, and often we hear more about his whiskey side than his rum side. So tonight we're going to get to hear more about the fun stuff. Uh, we also have very special guest, uh, our head blender, master blender for Black Top Rum, Mr. Oliver Chilton. Hello. I think I'm just a master chancer, to be honest, man. <laughs> <laughs> to, to give you some context, Oliver hates being called a master blender. So if we can all make sure we refer to him as a master blender, that would make me very happy. So thank you. That's very <laughs> kind, man. Cheers. <laughs> and and Ollie, you're on your day off today and you you come to this, you know, uh, still well, it's a party. It's not really work, is it? So, <laughs> No, it's wonderful. So thank you so much for, for being here. And we're going to be uh, getting to pick Ollie's brains tonight about <coughs> rum blending and how this, this uh, new rum was put together as well. And we also have coming live from Trailer Happiness itself. This is not a background. Uh, we have the amazing Sly Augustine, owner of Trailer Happiness. And as a What's surprise up? gift to me, we have a uh, like, rum ambassador Ian as well. As well. Wait, well, look, I'm talking to my, today, today, Ian is my trusty sidekick. That's it. I just, I'm just here to drink one of my favourite rums in the world. There you go. A free one. Yes. <laughs> so it's the one in the glass, right? Yeah, the one in my glass. That's it. <laughs> but um, this is, I, I think nothing epitomises how amazing Trailer is than we do a, a, a live rum session and the Global Ambassador just happens to bring by and, you know, drop in. That's how we do, man. I know, I know people. <laughs> yeah. Magic trailer. We've got the beautiful Joe Wilkins making the daiquiris in the background. Cheers, guys. Did you, get, did you, did you guys get a daiquiri in your pack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am very jealous. Uh, and if anyone's in the area tonight, I'd say after we... After we finish our training, please come on down to trailer because uh, I know where I'm going for my knockoff drinks. Um, so, guys, let's let's get it started. I'm so excited to have you here tonight. Uh, please pour yourself start off with the Barbados components. So if you've got your tasting packs there, mm -hmm. give you an idea. You've got your tasting pack in there. You're going to have five rums. We're going to start Barbados, then Guyana, then Jamaica. Then we're going to go to Blacktop Finest Caribbean and the 50th anniversary as our final run for the night. Um, so, Sly. Yo. How you doing, man? My guy, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm doing pretty good. Um, beautiful people, delicious rum. One more. Look at that, look at that face. Look at, look at that gorgeous face right there on my screen. Yeah, he looks always looks so serious. I know, right? He just, he's faking it though. He's never really serious. He's just... But he's look like right now. Skinder looks like Santa to me. You know, you it know might be. I was wondering. I was wondering who you were talking about. It's definitely <laughs> you, man. You knew it was you. He knew. He knew. Santa, Santa Secunda Singh, the three S's. There you go, Rum Santa. There you go, Rum Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Skinda, you are the Rum Santa. Which is <laughs> Um, John says, if you like the anchor bag, uh, maybe let us know this is a sample pin we're working on. Oh, so maybe, love maybe, maybe just to uh, get this across the line, just let us know if you'd like one of these pins and we'll see if we can make it happen. I love a pin. Yes, please. I love, I love a, pin. a pin. I love a pin. See, look, who's that? Keegan. Add, add to the collection. There we go. Oh, here we are. I oh, know, it's, it's the guy that didn't, didn't forgot his home. Ah, there we are. David. Hey, man. Wonderful, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I wanted to. I wanted to start this off tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to start things off with you, and I really wanted to ask you because you've you've been at Trailer pretty much for the whole journey, right? You've been yes. there from before you owned it as as yeah, falling in love and 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 yep. in love with the venue and the run and everything else there, and now you're the, the owner and steering ship. And, I guess I really want to get a better idea for what the, the, all the bartenders that might be watching, like how the rum world has evolved in those seven yeah. years that you guys have been I mean, I mean, I mean, massively, obviously from a, um, 
from a commercial perspective, you know, the, the, big, the big guys are still the big guys. But I think what has really changed is the tools that are available to persuade people to drink rum. You know, the, the, it's so much easier now to take the consumer, right, and switch them onto rum in a second because you've got so many different um, textures and so many different colors of rum that, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. If somebody comes into your bar, if they like alcohol, I've got a rum for you. You know what I mean? If you like, <laughs> I've, got, I've got a rum for you. And that's, I think that's what's changed is we're, we're, a, lot armed, we're a lot better armed to, to kind of champion rum now. There's so much good rum out there at the moment. So is that just down to the selection and what juices are putting out or is I think it's I think it's it's been this kind of um this kind of synergy and this kind of back and forth between producers um and and rum fans and real hardcore rum fans. So I think that for a lot of rum producers they've been kind of, you know, there was a period when you, you produce for the market, right? So you make rum based on what you think the masses want. And I think what we've seen now is, you know, rum producers are much more, you know, it's much more of an art now and they're much more happy to kind of almost dictate and let, you know, and get feedback from people rather than trying to please everybody. They're much more comfortable and confident in expressing themselves and, and doing what they think is right and doing what they think rum should be. And then we all get to benefit because we get all of these different versions and variations of rum, right? As, a, as, a, as opposed to everybody trying to create what's going to sell in the supermarkets. Do you know what I mean? There are rums out there that are fantastic that I may not love, but somebody else will love. And that's what I like about rum at the moment. It's so varied. There's so much, um, yeah, there's so many different aspects and angles. What do you think? I, I think you just touched upon um, one of the most important things about the rum category is there are rums that you don't like, <clears throat> that you may not drink, that are quality. It means that there's a broader, there's a broader perspective of the rum category and that's what we're gravitating to as, as rum drinkers, as rum lovers. But more importantly, it's been filtered down to the general rum consumer. They're now understanding differences about certain rums, but before, it was just white, gold, and dark. Now they're actually asking questions. People are actually coming to bars and actually brand call them, which never really saw exactly. back in the day. Exactly. So, uh, the, the category is growing. Still a long way to go. It's not as it's not like some of the other spirits that are out there um, in in regards to being respected for what it is. But it's it's it's, it's on its way. You know, I'll give an example of where rum is now. I um I recently um had a meeting with my landlord. So um, me and my landlord have, have been hanging out a lot more than we were before COVID. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it, it, yeah, it just it just kind of it, it evolved. And he's he's super interested in rum. Like he is really interested in rum. And you know, I, I was happy. I was fortunate enough to bring him a, a few different styles of rum that he immediately gravitated towards. What was really interesting as well, actually, is. His appreciation of it for somebody that didn't drink rum, he was he was more a cognac guy. But I, the rums I gave him, he immediately identified what he liked, right? Without me having to steer him, he just went, "This is oh, I like this is me, I like this, and that's it, right?" So that's what I mean when I say it's really easy to get people on board. I'm actually, I'm at, you'll be happy to know, I'm ordering him a bottle of the um, 50th anniversary um, for Christmas for a Christmas present. He invited me to his Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm bringing him a bottle of Black Top 50th anniversary. So what I'm saying is, can I get a discount code? <laughs> can I get a Kinder? Can I get a discount coupon? No, we need to buy Dawn. No, Dawn's on. Oh, cool. oh no, we well, don't have you. to ask Dawn now. We can go straight to Secunda now. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Right. Apparently. I do that. <laughs> don't, don't ever do that. Nah, look, Dawn, Dawn just came on. Oh no, uh, that was a rec uh, that wasn't me that said that, Dawn. Not, no, Dawn, not the, not the, um, no, see, look, Dawn, that's a different conversation, Dawn. <laughs> not for the last consignment. That's the last consignment, not for the last consignment. This is something else. I'm getting in trouble, Dawn, I'm, I'm just joking. It's like, we yeah. sold out, the price has gone up. Okay, yeah, 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 fine, oh, fine. I win it, you know I win it. If, if, I retract, I didn't know Dawn was here. I, I retract everything I said. See, if Secunda was a Mandalorian, he would say, this is the way. This is the way. There Buy it go. and then let it run out and then set it high. But yeah, but to call, you know, around the houses, rum is in, is in a great place. Um, the community has evolved. I don't think it's changed, but it's grown. Yeah. And there's just so much more um, beautiful faces.
than they were when I started out. Yeah. And, and are, you, are you finding that with, with the customers that are coming in, are they are they asking more for, for top tier rum? I know we've always had the rum geek. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, so I mean, we've always had, so we've always had, I'd say top tier rum, rum guys coming into trailer. And now we have a kind of, a next kind of level of people who are just kind of getting into rums or they know about rums, or they know about their rums that they love. And we do get actually a lot more people from that kind of, so we say the middle range of, of rum lovers coming in and asking questions and asking if, they, if we have their favorite type of rum. Um, but I just, I also think that we get a lot more people who are just more receptive to rum now, you know. And I think I think rum is just, it's just it's just much more interesting. It's a much more interesting spirit than most of the stuff that's on the market at the moment. It's definitely you know more interesting than cheese. So it is, you know what I mean. So yeah, so we're getting more people that are willing to to kind of experiment and try um, what we have to offer them, which is ninety five percent rum. You said something interesting uh, in one of the earlier on the year. I forget which one because everything online is just blended into one now. But right. I remember you saying how uh, the, bar the bartenders are the, are the front line of the rum industry. How like you guys are, are the first line of defense and of introducing things and, and the date people to what can be someone falling in love with rum or being immediately turned off them forever, you know, and, and never giving it a second chance. So what, like, how, how do you culture that in the bar? Because obviously, like, trailer's a unique example, and I know there's, you know, we're spot for choice in London. We, we have more and more rum bars coming up now, and like, I know we've got, like, David from Black Parrot, which has a beautiful back bar and selection of rum there, and we've got Merchant House, we've got Lackey Kane, we've got these amazing little homes of rum uh, sp springing up. But sort of trailer, trailer's been there from pretty much the, the start of all of that. And what, how, do you, how do you foster that? How do you get more people, um, I don't know, like how do you teach those gatekeepers to be the, the rum advocates that they are and, and pull it through? Oh, we've got, a, we've, got, we've got an illegal screen share. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> House of Bamboo. <laughs> But you know, screen, Scotty. nice one, Scotty. Um, <laughs> bro, fuck. Yeah, we yes, see you. I mean, we see you. I'm um, selling it on the side, the secret string. Okay, um, that was class. That was classic. Um, no, so to answer your question, you're right. Absolutely, you're right. It's one of the reasons why whenever we get guys coming in that want to sell rum to us, you know, we're always open to try any different rums. But I have to let them know that ultimately, it doesn't matter whether or not I I buy your rum. If my bartenders are not into it, it will sit on the back bar for eternity. You know what I mean? So it's very important that my guys, and I'm lucky because my team at the moment are incredibly well um, knowledge, um, and they all, but they also have their own distinct personalities and, and preferences, right? So we can kind of cover the whole range. You know, we've got we've got Serge, who is like, I'm going to just call him like an Esther monkey. Esther yeah, yeah like he just wants all the esters I, that you could possibly German. get in a bottle. That's how much esters he loves. Seriously, right? <laughs> we got him, but then we know we we also got you know we got Simon without name calling, but we got we got different every aspect of rum that you could want to be covered. You have it at the moment, and so in terms of what 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 we do. All we do is just give them the tool. We just, we just introduce them to, to rums that we think are good. And if they like them, we sell them. And if they don't, if nobody likes them, then we don't sell them. You know, like, it's just really the market dictates itself. And the bartenders, you know, in this bar anyway, are consumers as well. Like, they're rum lovers. They don't just do this because they, you know, for the money. Um, even though the money's great, I want to say. One of the, you know, one of the most, <laughs> most generous bar owners in London. Um, but they, no, they, do it, they do it because they love rum genuinely like genuinely and do you feel like i i, I did i did a tasting for this whiskey club last week and they were like we and you know these are all like high profile whiskey guys they knew their they knew their stuff they knew how to drink booze they're, they're not afraid of anything high abv or whatever and they're and they're and and i came on i was sort of in the background and they were just talking amongst themselves and they're like how do we drink it do we do we just do we just pour it in a glass do we do i need to get some Coke or ginger beer? Do I, do I add water? Do I add ice? They were like, 
it was it was like they were like wow. looking at something for the first time and going yeah. every, every experience they'd had of rum pre prior to that was it had to be mixed or that was their their misconception so you know as as a cocktail bar as a, as a bar that's like you know obviously trailers famed for its rum cocktails as well like are you finding a transition are you finding people going from like ordering less less cocktails to more neat and be more more Pro, uh, you know open to that or is it was it still what what's your experience with that and how do you how do you like to lead it as well hello yeah it's getting it's getting noisy there um <laughs> yeah so you know you're, you're absolutely right so trailer happiness you know we are we're a cocktail bar. and um of course jazz is making noise in the background um so we sell you know we sell a lot of cocktails we also sell whatever the customer asks us for there's a large percentage of drinks that we make which are just drinks that somebody's asked for right so we don't we don't necessarily dictate to everybody that comes in what they drink but what i will say is as i said before is we're finding that people are much more open to trying the rums and our guys will always suggest that they try the rums right and listen if you come into trailer and you look at the back bar it looks like a toy store, right? Like it just, you know, people are just always captivated by all the bottles and they like, they ask questions like, what's this, what's that? And, you know, before you know it, they've got a little flight, they've got a small flight. Well, you know, we'll give them a rum to try. You know what I mean? If they're, if they're enthusiastic and then they'll, they'll, they'll buy one. They'll be like, well, can I try this or can I buy that? Whatever. And it's just, you know, it's, it's really personal. There isn't, there isn't a kind of formula to how we sell rum. It's, it, it depends on the individual. Every person that comes in that asks about rum gets a very specific, you know what I mean, experience. Like it's very much dependent on whoever comes in. If you really want to go all the way in, we're here for you. If you just want to maybe try something that isn't generic, you know what I mean, box standard rum and coke rum, we've got you. You know, we can give you a great rum to mix with ginger ale. Like, it's fine. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, it's small steps. We're still at the, at the early stages. And, you know, it's not it has, It's not like a complete shift and a wave and everybody's drinking car strength, um, you know, barrel-aged rum. But I genuinely feel that this is the way. As we said already, like, <laughs> like... So then, you, Mandalorian and everyone. You just, yeah, you just get that feeling, or I just get that feeling that the public, the general public, are, are beginning to become more receptive to the idea of really high quality spirits. Obviously, whiskey has been dominant, has dominated that field for a long time, and I think that aside from that, I think rum is is the only potential um, challenger. You know, the kid will be like, never. But you know, um, <laughs> yeah, I generally feel pound for pound rum at the moment is the value of good rum is it's incredible. You know, and and uh, and generally the 50th anniversary um, black top is one of the best rums I've had for that price. Point. It's ridiculously good value for money. I do mean that generally. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you both. And then, and I guess you know we 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 kind of uh, and we we're, we're in the rum. Elite, we've got some incredible people in the room, like Scotty Shooter from Dirty Dick in Paris, one of my spiritual homes in the world. You know, it's just, and I can't wait to see you again, Scotty. And uh, you know, as I say, uh, as I mentioned before, David at Black Parrot, another another incredible rum bar. So we've we've got quite a few people here here who already have built these incredible rum offerings for their customer. But for those who might be in the chat listening now, who are like, who might work at a bar that doesn't have the best rum selection yet or maybe hasn't like branched out their their rum rum offering to something that would be you know as exciting to them as, as, it, as it could be what's do you have any tips have you got any guidance for like how to get more rum into your bar or how to make it more appealing to to customers i mean listen it's, it's super easy it's not difficult um there are there's so much good rum out there at the moment right go on a rum forum preferably not ministry and ask <laughs> misery no and misery. ask you know misery. ask a couple of, like you'll find it you'll find good rum and just listen just just bring it out and just have fun with it just just you know sample it with your favorite customers that's it yeah have i got any um no just buy good rum um buy rum that you like and share it that's you know that's really it like it, the, the rum will do the most of the heart the heavy lifting for you you know the rum is good right now like just buy good rum and it'll do the work for you yeah you want to add anything to that in um uh, what i'd add to that is there are i mean you mentioned at the start there's some great rum bars here in, in, in london 
that have a lot of rums. But there's a, a very wise, wise rum owner who said, um, just because you got 200 rums, um, it doesn't make you a uh, Picasso. <laughs> Yeah, because there's a there's a lot of you can have like 200 rums in your bar and you don't know how to use it. You don't know how to basically get that to the right customer. You can have 10 rums in your bar, and you could be one of the best rum focus bars in the world. Just because the people behind the sticks, people that have knowledge and understanding of what they have behind it, can really tell that story of what the rum category can offer. And that's what really allures people to rum is the stories and the connection and the understanding of what rum has. It creates a intrinsic value to the actual consumer. So you can have 10 rums that will just cover small points. It might be a Jamaican rum, a Barbados rum, a fresh sugar cane juice rum. It might be a rum that may be finished in various little parts. It may be a sweetened rum because you know, people are still attracted to sweetened products. And well, yeah. the Ministry of Rum just blew up. I just heard of <laughs> Exactly. And, and, I, and I will take on anyone in the world if they want to challenge me one on one when it comes to rum. I, I'm, I'm, I'm big like that. I don't care. So, <laughs> you don't want to yeah. smoke. You don't want to eat rum. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You don't want me to set tripping on you if you want to challenge me when it comes to rum. So, you may love a sweetened rum. That's your choice at the end of the day. Just understand what you're drinking. So, you can have 10 rums in your bar and still get that message across. You can have two run, 200 rums in your bar and not know what the hell you're doing. So as that slice said, <laughs> yeah, you can have all these different rums in that time. If you don't know how to use them, then it doesn't make any sense. Someone's going to come in there with less knowledge when they walk in there. Less, you know, the guys behind the stick, the girls behind the stick are going to be able to pass that information on. So and we're seeing more and more of those types of bars developing around the world where people are doing the work, they're understanding what the category has to offer, they're understanding where rum is going. And more importantly, they're, they're shedding this inferiority complex that is always put on rum. I will say, and I will fight against the whiskey guys and the brandy guys, rum is superior than whiskey and brandy. And I don't give a shit if people argue with me. It is true. And you know why? Because I'm not going to feel like, oh, I'm from the colonies and blah, 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 and our product's inferior. No, our product is superior. Why? We have so much flavor, so much taste, an array of different types of distillations and agents from around the world. Rum is, rum is here. Rum is going to the future. And people like yourself, people like Secunda, although he thinks he's a whiskey guy, he's a rum guy, really. People like Danny Dix in Paris and uh, all the other guys. I know uh, all the guys from all over the world that's actually tuning in today. They know where rum is going. And, 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 and I'm confident, in all the years I've been in rum, I'm confident today, now, because rum is in great hands. It's in great hands. So I'm just happy. I know when I decide to retire and sleep or whatever, no one rum, which is probably like 90 odd years old. I have a smile on my face. And you said rum is a great what, sorry? Like rum, say rum is in a great place. It's, it's a great, great place. place because it's in the hands of great people. It's in the hands of great people. And I think for, for all of the steps that has been, frankly, one of, one of the nicest things that's come out, I know we've talked about this slide as well, is how it's, it's given us access to people who normally you would have to travel half the world to go and see or catch at a fair, or you might have like two minutes with, you know, whilst they're trying to talk to a hundred people. And, and I'd say one thing that, that has been really nice that's come out of this is that we now have access to, you know, Sly, I've, I've heard you talk more this year than, than ever normally because you're normally surrounded by a little group, group of fans. Same with you, Ian, you know, you're like, you know, it's, and it's amazing. We've got this access. So, you know, one thing I, I would add as well is if, if you can find, find yourself a, a rum mentor, you know, find yourself that person that you just go like, you know, I'm thinking of this, this and this, what do I need? And, and rum people are only too happy to help, you know, maybe don't put it on an open rum forum always like direct message us because, <laughs> you know, they, they suffer no fools on there, but <laughs> And, and having, you know, people like yourselves both to, to look up to in the industry, you know, Ian, I know we've, we've done tours around Australia before and, and Sly, we've, you know. Neil, can you believe that? What's that? <laughs> like two years ago around Australia. <laughs> yes, okay. It's, you know, having, having people like you to look up to, having people that we can, we can aspire to, to get your knowledge and to, to get your understanding and your flavors. And even if you end up in different, you know, different favorites and different opinions, like, we we've got those those people there and, and now more than ever we have access to them i think that's really cool so so yeah so th thank you both um we let's pour another rum because i'm worried that we might my rum's running a little dry so
just uh, just so you know, because I, I sent out an email to everyone earlier, uh, but that first run that you had is a five-year-old tropically aged from Foursquare Distillery. You may have heard of it. Uh, distilled by a guy called Richard Seals. Beautiful pot column still blend. It's fruity, it's tropical. And, and these three components, just to sort of explain the, the, the run order of the pack tonight, these first three rums, the Barbados, the Guyana and the Jamaica, they are the components that make up Black Top Finest Caribbean. And they are the individual ingredients. Now, yeah. the reason why we put those in the pack um, again, we did all these whiskey tastings recently and all the guys are like, I really like the, the Barbados or I really like the Jamaica, like, where do I buy a bottle of this? I'm like, well, you can't. It's, it's just a component. They're like, you've given us three rums we can't buy. I'm like, well, yeah, because, because for me, and I know it's a, an unusual move, but for me, like, I, I fucking hate it when brands are like, oh, it's a secret recipe. We can't tell you what's in it. Like, we swam under an island and found these casks and you know it's a uh, it's all this like bullshit you either don't know because you don't care or like why would you not tell me do you know what i mean it's like it, it would be like a pro chef doing a recipe on tv and be like i'm not going to tell you the ingredients because you might try and be me like no tell the reason why you tell the ingredients the reason why you share the recipe is so that people have the appreciation so people are inspired to go out and go actually I really like that Barbados. Let me go and check out all of those rums coming from Barbados. Let me go and find my five favorite one. And maybe it's Guyana or Jamaica or whatever. So, so you know, we're in a very, very privileged position as, as rum blenders to be able to cherry pick from the world of rum distilleries and put all these flavors together. It's not, it's not like the whiskey world, you know? In, in terms of rum blending, we are superior because we are able to say, let's take this flavor from Barbados. Let's mix it with some funk from Jamaica, some rich chocolate licorice from Guyana. Let's put that all together because it will taste delicious. And the, the, the problem with that, I believe, as, as blenders is when we do that, often we don't give the, the props to the countries or the distilleries where it comes from. Often that gets lost in the mix. It's just like, oh, it's a blend, you know, we won't tell you. No, I want you to know the individual islands. I want you to know where each distillery comes from, what each component is. And if you like the blend, amazing, put it. This is um, I, you know, I'm very happy as well as we've been talking about this, but we actually have put these blend ratios on Black Top Finest Caribbean and, and it's already on the 50th anniversary, which I'm super, super proud to show you later on as well. So, but anyway, let's pour some more rum because I'm getting thirsty. Let's pour your Guyanese component now. So just to introduce this quickly, this is a blend. It's actually a blend of two rums that you've got in the pack. So, the Guyana component you have is a blend of these two rums. We have an unaged Guyana, which you may have noticed doesn't look like an unaged. Guyana, it's Guyana or Jamaica? Guyana. Guyana. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know some of the packs might not have it in the right order. Um, so Barbados, Guyana, then Jamaica. So Guyana first. So it's a blend of two rums. It's our unaged Guyana, which, uh, as you may notice, has a little bit of uh, has a little bit of caramel in there. Um, and our three to five year old Guyana blended together. And um, I show you this because again, you know, as uh, Danny just put in the chat, trans transparency is the future. Yeah, absolutely. When, when we wanted to show this breakdown of rums to people, we asked for all the components and asked for these to be separated. We were like, oh, you sent us the wrong one. This, uh, this isn't unaged. And they went, yeah, it is. We were like, well, why is it that color? It's like, because that's the color it comes as. We're like, okay, can we get it uncolored? No, it's like, you want that flavor, that particular, you know, flavor profile and everything that does for the blend, that's how it comes. So, okay, so. Mitch, do, Mitch, do you want to explain why they put caramel in to unaged rum? Just, you know, to traditional thing? Just yeah, so, 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 I mean, traditionally, and, and, and obviously we can get into this, this is uh, going to be a big part of, of uh, uh, especially when we get to chat to Ollie tonight, but traditionally you could, you could order rum by the color, you know, and, and still today you'll see a lot of rums which are, you know, might list gold or silver or, or, or things on the label. And as a blender, it was a it was a tool. It was something you can order from a distillery. You could say, I want, you know, if it was from Jamaica, I want this mark level. If it was from certain distilleries, you could order the color that you wanted for it as well. Traditionally in Guyana, they would have added molasses to their barrels. Um, you know, that was a that was a big thing. 
Uh, today, there's, there's much less molasses being made in Guyana, so it's uh, not so prevalent as it used to be, but certainly that would have been historically part of Guyana's heritage in making rum. And, you know, you do get, you do get a lot of rums from uh, Guyana that are much more, uh, have much more caramel or have a little sweetness added to them as well, a little sugar. Um, and they're beautiful, you know, like El Dorado 15 was one of the rums that I first fell in love with, and they make some absolutely stunning rums from that distillery. Um, so you have all of these beautiful, beautiful things being, uh, being com coming out of Guyana. And there's only one distillery now in Guyana. You have the Diamond Distillery, uh, which is almost like a, a best of the, the Guyanese rum history. You know, they have these heritage stills from closed down or demolished distilleries that they've collected, they've pulled in. So if you've heard of Port Morant stills or Versailles stills, Sabal stills, Enmore still, um, all of these are like these heritage stills which they've brought to this new distillery. And we're going to actually dive into that a little bit more with our 50th later on. But, um, but Sakinda, I'd love to bring you in at this point as we, as we enjoy our Guyanese rum. Um, I, I would love to hear your backstory because obviously everyone really knows you as the whiskey guy. And we've had some delicious rums together, <laughs> the, these included. And, and I know you have a passion for rum as well. So I, I'd love for, for everyone who doesn't know your, your backstory with rum, like how did you first fall in love with rum? What's your, what's your backstory with rum? Okay, so just as a background, so my parents were the first uh, Indians in the UK to open a liquor shop, uh, an off license. And next year will be the 50th anniversary of my family getting into the liquor business. So Logically, you could say I started in the business when I was two years old. <laughs> okay, so I've been here a long time. Um, grew up in the shops, you know, with all these crazy bottles around me. I guess when I got to the age when I could serve, I think the two spirits which really fascinated me were single malt whiskey, which was always on the top shelf, and rum. I'm not sure why, but it's just the type of customers that used to come and ask for rum. Um, you know, we talk about all these specialist rum bars today, etc. We were probably the first ever rum specialist in the UK. Um, and this is going back 35 years, some maybe, maybe a bit longer. And when I'm saying a rum specialist, I'm talking about 10 to 15 rums. I'm not talking about a lot of rums. I think Mitch, you had a picture of me standing in my parents' shop, you know, by chance behind the rum selection. And you can see some of the things there. So from as far back as I can remember, you know, in the early days, the rums I remember, of course, were the big brands of today, Captain Morgan, Lambs, Woods, things like that, Bacardi, Havana. But then the new wave of rums came, which were Appleton, uh, Mount Gay, and Coxpur. Those were the three, you could say, uh, what I would call real, a bit more authentic rums. Um, and it was really interesting <laughs> that you can see just literally the middle shelf. You go Rare Nephew on the extreme right, uh, ESA Fields, White, uh, Bacardi, Myers, we should have somewhere. You go Langs, Jamaican rum. Uh, no, not Langs, yeah, Banana. Uh, what's it called? Um, yeah, but Thunderberg. Is that Thunderberg? Yes, yeah, Thunderberg is. Yeah, yeah. It's Thunderberg. 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 Bacardi Spice. Yeah, yeah Bacardi you Spice. That's the original one. You can see Mount Gay. You can see Apple. Um, the Barbados one that they do that. You know, one of Richard. Oh, what is yes, yeah. it? Yeah, no, the one in. And guys, just look at the price of the Coxburn, nine ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, of course. <laughs> So yeah. this is a long time ago, as you can see. It's a good 30 plus years ago. You yeah. haven't aged a day. <laughs> I can't remember. Right. So like this is it. I mean, there's a few more rums behind me, but this is it. I mean, uh, and we were so right. lean. That's no, that you're right. Yes. Yeah. Old Brigand. Old Brigand. Old Brigand. Yeah. Yes. The, the one eye. The one eye man. For 10 pounds. Look at that. 998. 998 <laughs> you know what I think you should do, Sakinda? For your anniversary, it's, I think you should bring Bellows prices. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Bring Bellows prices for your anniversary. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. So, okay, let's carry on. So, yeah. 
Old, old Brigham is the one with uh, Sergio on the label, isn't it? If, uh... that again? That's the one. That's yeah. the one. Old Brigham has got a picture of uh, That's Sergio. Right. Sergio yep. right yeah. on the label. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just I just found it interesting. And the, I think the rums that really interested me were literally, as I said, Appleton and Man Gay especially. And then a, a guy walked into the shop and says, I see you sell a lot of rum. I go, yeah. He goes, but you don't sell the best. Go, really? And I go, what's the best? The great he line. Goes, he goes, <laughs> XM from Guyana. I go, I'm sorry, never heard of it. I've got a bottle here for those of you who want to see. Yeah. Beautiful old yeah. bottle of XM. Where's, where's, yeah? where's the plastic bottle, Secunda? <laughs> no, I've, got, I've seen that as well, but no. <laughs> so I tried it. He goes, look, I've got some samples. He had the five and the, I think the 10. It was either five or the seven or the five and the 10. And I just fell in love. I just thought it was absolutely delicious. Absolutely fell in love with it. And by chance, you know, years later, when we started importing brands, you know, I started the whiskey exchange and specialty drinks and we started importing products. The first rum we ever bought in was actually XM. Um, and it was lovely in those days. It was absolutely superb. And the reason I think it was lovely was A, they purchased all their stock from Demerara distillers. Yeah. Mm. Um, I.e. some beautiful, you know, beautiful, as you say, rums from. Ah, sorry, Secunda, what, what year was this? What year was this? <laughs> this is going back about 30 years. Yeah, because I've started Whiskey Chain 21 years ago, so it was a good 10 years before that. Um, so early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. The really nice guy, I don't know if you know him, if he's still around, a guy called Dwayne, uh, who used to bring this, bring this in. And that's really where I started falling in love with rum. Uh, but for me, it's like you said, you know, rum was actually very simplistic in those days. And, you know, it was a happy drink. It was a fun drink. But it was quite, for me, I would say, you know, a little one dimensional, just easy going, lovely, sweet, rich flavors. And that was it. That's where my interest probably started, Mitch. And, and then how, how did it develop? So going from those sort of, as you say, quite simple, singular flavors, mm. what was the turning point? What was the, the moment where you went, oh shit, maybe, maybe I am tempted to the rum side, you know? <laughs> I think, look, you know, we started bringing in lots of products from abroad, just looking for interesting, quirky products. Again, one of the early products we brought into the UK was Diplomatico, Reserva Exclusiva, and, and even Zacapa. I used to import Zacapa from Italy. Um, and, you know, they were very different in style. They were a completely different style that no one had ever tried. You know, the rich, lovely, rich, sweet. Uh, but they were, they were different. And for people, they were a bit of a revelation, you know, they were like quite different. Um, so we just carried on, you know, from there. But I think for me, what really, really, really blew my mind was really the original rum flagons. Yeah. So this is going back probably around 12, 15 years ago. And I got a, 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 you know, being a whiskey guy, I was specializing in old and rare whiskey. I was buying, you know, antique whiskey, whatever we, is, is how I would probably put it. And I was advertising around the country, looking for, you know, interesting products and things. And a guy phoned me up saying, look, I've got these flagons of rum, meant absolutely nothing to me. I go, could you tell me more? He goes, I used to be in the Navy. And have you heard of the rum ration, which was served in the Navy? Navy. I was going, I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. He goes, well, for, you know, hundreds of years, this rum ration was served in 1970. It was abolished and all the rum, you know, was put into demijohns. And of course, prior to that was actually put into demijohns and actually sent on ships. And he goes, I've got a couple of these demijohns. So he brought them around by, fortunately he was based in London. He brought them around. I looked at them, I was really fascinated. I'd done some research in the meantime. And I was just like, this is a piece of history. I'm gonna buy these. So I bought them, put them away, completely forgot about them until about six months later, he put one of his friends on to me saying, um, I've also got some flagons. And I thought, 
interesting. I'll buy, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to buy them, but the question is, what do they actually taste like? I don't want to just keep buying, you know, these flagons. I'm curious. So I opened one of the flagons I had, and honestly, I was mesmerized into how amazing, how rich, how complex it was. For me, it was like, you know, as a whiskey drinker, it was like, this is, I've never tried anything like this. This is the best rum I've ever tried. But I was really unsure. So I kept the flagon on my desk in the office. And for the next week, I tried a little bit every day just to make sure I was absolutely <laughs> right, you know? And then I, 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 I took some samples. Got to be sure, Sakinda. That's why I drink do. rum every day. Every day, just to make sure. Do. And then I took some sample. I took a sample and went to see a couple of people who, um, who I knew were, you know, big into rum, including Paul McFadden, uh, Ben, um, uh, Richard Woods, um, saying, what do you think of this? And they're like, what is this? I've never tried anything like this, you know? just blew everyone's mind. Anyone who tasted it, it blew their mind. So of course I went, went ahead and bought these 10 flagons, then came across more, bought those 20 flagons. So then I got to a point thinking, you know, where the heck are all these flagons coming from? So I did a lot of research, found out that, that about, you know, five years prior, the Royal Navy who had still, you know, thousands of these flagons, had basically wanted to clear their warehouses to build a new building and actually sold them. And they had gone to a company who then went bankrupt. Yeah. And the stock was sitting in the hands of liquidators. So I approached, I tracked down the liquidators and, you know, said, what's going on with this? Do you have this, these flagons? And they go, yeah, we do. I go, are you selling them? He goes, no, I've sold them. I go, really? He goes, yeah, I sold them yesterday. It's like, damn, I missed them. He goes, are you interested? I go, yeah, I'm very, very, very interested. Here's a note to the, one of the guys who actually bought some of the flagons from um, the Royal Navy. You can see it's from the Ministry of Defense. You know, beautiful documentation. And you can see the date, 1994. So I bought them not as I bought them probably were around 2005, six, something like that. So they'd been around for a good 10 years, um, going from a couple of different hands. So anyway, going back, so the liquidator asked me, he goes, are you really interested? I go, yes, I am interested. He goes, out of interest, what would you pay? I go, I don't know. Um, I go, can you send me a list of what you have? He sent me a list. I went back to him an hour later, I made him an offer. And he goes, hmm, interesting. Your offer's quite a lot higher than we've received. So I'll accept your <laughs> offer. So next thing I knew, I was the owner of 2,000 plus flagons. It was like, great, this is brilliant. What am I going to do with them? <laughs> you know, it was, I thought, okay, we can sell them to bars like that. It'd be quite cool. But the fact was, they're difficult to serve from. And, you know, who, who you know, not many bars can afford to buy a gallon, four and a half liter flagon. It's a lot of money. Yeah. So I came up with the idea to create a brand called Black Top, you know, which was really uh, named after the history uh, of those flagons, i.e. Black Top Day. You know, the name was perfect. Fortunately, it wasn't registered. So that was it. That was really where it started. And for me, it was just, it was beautiful rum. It was rum, you know, even today. We are very grateful for this. We are very grateful for this. Thank you. So, so, so Kinder, there's a couple of things. Uh, I think there's, there's, there's three really interesting points in that story that I really want to point out. But first of all, everyone who's heard that story says it's the first time that you've ever ever offered more than, uh, than what they were expecting on the table. So, <laughs> so we're, we're very Absolute grateful. rubbish. <laughs> Um, but even just like looking at this, this, uh, this sale docket, you know, like, um, just seeing the details, disposal of Navy rum, like, I mean, just, just getting rid of it, just clearing the warehouse, you know, um, and also the other, the other point, which I've only just noticed now, but it went to Chelmsford in Essex. So I'm fairly sure that's the best run that's ever been in Essex. <laughs> Essex. <laughs> <laughs> 
but um but yeah so 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 it's a it's, it's a crazy origin story it's crazy how these flagons first came about and it took you it was about two years roughly that you were tracking these flagons down is that right yeah approximately yeah correct so what happened was the parcel actually ended up being split into two i think a part of the parcel i don't remember it was just probably about between a thousand and fifteen hundred flagons was sold to a company in America called Castle Brands. And the other two, two and a half thousand flagons were sitting in, as we said, Essex. Um, <laughs> so once I bought the flagons in the UK, I then approached Castle Brands and said, you've got these flagons, would you sell them to me? Because I think for me, if I wanted to do a project, I wanted to have all the stock. You know, it made more sense. I didn't want, you know, thousands of flagons sitting with one company and I'm doing something. And then two people launch a brand or two separate brands. It confuses things. I think it was for me, it was better that it, we did it. We tried to do it properly um, and control the stock. So that's what we ended up doing. And this is one of the things that I want to, I, I guess I want to get stuck in with you. So those those flagons which we pulled up on the screen before that we showed everyone. So they, they hold four and a half liters Correct. each. Yeah. Um, 4.55 liters if we're going to be, be picky about it. Um, and one of the interesting things, which uh, you know, I know uh, Matt Petrex has done, so has done a lot of research into, but one of the interesting things you mentioned is how the evolution of the Navy rum blend, how the flagons didn't all taste the same. And this and this idea that, um, uh, you know, th th this idea that these flagons were just one recipe or one thing all the way through is not the case, you know? No, so, not at all. What, what was your experience in tasting all these different flagons and, and everything else? So I guess initially my belief was it was all the same product. You know, it was all Navy rum, it was all taken from um the vigilous yards and put into these demijohns and it was the same stock bottle at the same time but looking at the stock there were so many different markings you know some had red stripes some had some were plain some were stripped from the wicker there was just lots of different markings and as i opened a number of them to see it was quite clear that there were i found two or three different styles yeah now, what I presumed, because, you know, there was very little information, I couldn't really find anyone who could answer those questions. My belief was that because there was two Vigilis Yards in the UK, one in Portsmouth, one in London, that they had been bottled from two different places. And hence the, re hence the reason that, you know, we had two styles of rums because we had two Solera systems, you know, different stock was being delivered to the different Vichler's yards, depending on what ship arrived. And they were being, you know, topped up into these Soleras at different times, you know, they were running individually. And that's my belief that they were two different recipes. But, and so that's the basis that I started blending on. Yeah, that was all my knowledge. I actually didn't look into the dates that, um, that much into detail because most of the stock which I saw actually had 1970 on or had nothing on. So I didn't actually see, because there were so many thousands of, you know, flagons. I'm not, I wasn't sitting there looking at every single flagon. For me, it was like one stock. So what we did was we took the two different types of flagons. We started blending. First, we did half-half, 50-50. We got to a point. We tried the liquid and we felt that actually, you know what, it needed a bit more of either the lighter one or the heavier one. So we put more of those in. And honestly, this blend took us over a year to get right because we kept topping with different things, different flagons of different styles until we felt the liquid was absolutely spot on. It was what I wanted. Um, so that's really what happened. And, and so for anyone who, who might not have seen it before, so Black Top, Although we're sort of, it, it almost feels like a new brand because we've just brought out some new things in the, in the last year or two. But if you can see it there, that's that. This is what Black Top started as with last consignment, and this is this is not an approximation of Navy Rum. This is the Navy Rum. This is what they actually had on the ships, and it's. Um, I, I got to say, when when you asked if I wanted to work here, Sakinda, 
it was a very easy decision because <laughs> it's like, do you want to do this? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> the other thing, Midge, sorry, the other thing I forgot to add was, you know, over time, you know, as we've learned more, I know Matt's done a lot of research, other people have done some research. What we've actually found is that actually the formula, you know, the blend, the Solera changed a lot over the last 50 odd years. Mm. And, you know, in the early days, in the early 1900s, my belief is it had more Jamaican. Yeah, but they got to a point, and I'm not sure, I can't remember exact dates, probably the 50s, 60s, where they decided the Jamaican element didn't suit or wasn't for the style that they wanted to serve. So they took that Jamaican element out or reduced it to a very low proportion and it and 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 they changed the recipe that way so actually you know now thinking about it with these demijohns you know when i look at i've tried now you know stuff from the 50s i've tried 50 i've tried 55 mm -hmm. tried some from the 60s i've tried some of course from the 70s and now when you try them side by side it makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. and i know um a couple of my colleagues um did some tests on a breakdown on esters, et cetera. And the ones from the 50s definitely had a higher uh, Jamaican component. And I know Luca bottled, um, Luca Gargano bottled, I think it was 1950 as well, mm -hmm. um, yeah. with a small batch of 50s. And what he said to me was he did an analysis and he was saying the ester levels, sorry, the, um, uh, what do you call it? Yes, there's the yeah, well, were very, very high. You know, they were hitting close to 800, 900, 1,000, which is not traditional in, you could say, the 1970 recipe. Yeah. And, so, uh, yeah, there are variances. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it is fascinating. And, and yeah, like um, Matt, Matt, who's uh, watching with us tonight, and has done, as you say, a lot of research into it. Yeah. And, and, um, and yeah, it, it definitely, it, it kind of makes sense because in World War II, we know more Jamaican rum was added into the blend because there was a, there was a shortage. And I want to give for everyone who's sort of looking at this at the moment, I want to give you just a quick like little cheat sheet because when, when, when I first started, this was, this is one of the most exciting parts uh, really of my job at the moment that I I'm, I'm can't wait to do once we can travel again because we, we still have some of these boxes and we're, we're still going through them. and, and now we have a lot more information with which to sort of pick apart what's going on here. So, so the, you can see like handwritten on, you've got different details of where they're being sent to. Faded on red in the, on the left-hand side, you can just make out, it says Antwerp. So this box was sent to Antwerp. Uh, we can see on the bottom, uh, on the left-hand picture here, PKD 11 slash 55. So this box was sent in November, 1955. Um, you know, we get little clues like, uh, you know, address labels with postcodes on because postcodes didn't exist before. It was sometime in the like 50s, 60s, I don't know, it was before my time, but <laughs> postcodes were a new thing. So this helps us data. They were, and these were very much, you can see by their design, these were a one way trip. You know, this rum was not designed to come back. It was nailed shut, wrapped in, you know, that's tin metal that's wrapped around the box. You've got to like crowbar that open. They're filled with sawdust. They're an absolute pain once you get them out. You can't, can't put them back in anywhere. Um, and, and then you have the flagons underneath and you have these, as, as, as you said, wicker covered ones to stop them, you know, bashing against them, breaking. They're all stone underneath. And, and the really geeky part, the thing that gets me excited is if, if that wax seal is still intact, that allows me to know where, where it was bottled and when. So 12-70 means December 1970. So five months after Black Tot Day, that flagon was filled. And around the outside, you'll have different things. I think, I think that one's Southern, but you have like Southern, you have different uh, like RWY for Royal William Yard. You have, we have one flagon from Singapore. So we know some flagons were being bottled in Singapore as well. I don't know why we have one from Singapore, but we have it. And that's another research mission at the moment. 
Um, and you know, this is these are some of the fallen soldiers. These are some of the ones that didn't make it. Um, you know, the, the one on the left stored upside down looks like some mice got in there and had a very good time with some rum. And uh, and the one on the right just wasn't airtight. And of course, don't worry, I tested the rum and it tasted like shit. It was, <laughs> it was no good. It tasted as dusty as it looks. Um, and, and every now and then we find these incredible relics in, in some of the boxes. So this is uh, essentially the, the best description I've had of this is, is that it's kind of like, almost like a, a provision card or, or for issuing rations out to a naval base if, if men were staying on, on shore for a few days. And so you have like 10 men, four men, 24 hours. Uh, you have a box of biscuits feeds 100 men, a jar of rum feeds 80 men. Uh, it says 4.55 liters on that one, Matt. Just, uh, you know, just saying. <laughs> and you've got you've got red, you know, that red stuff is definitely blood. Uh, we don't know what happened, but he managed to get the rum in the box. That's, uh, you know, he did his job. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's an incredible history project, and it goes so far beyond, you know, what I was taught when, you know, when I was taught what navy rum was as a bartender. It's, you know, oh, it's a blend, it's this, it's that, it's whatever. It's like actually seeing what this rum was, actually seeing how it evolved from year to year. And, you know, these flagons from 1955 and the evolution from 1917, it's like, I mean, it's just a dream. It's such a deep dream. So it's, uh, it's amazing. I'm, I'm trying to convince Sakinda to release some single vintage flagons so we can, uh, we, can, <laughs> we can actually try them all side by side. So if anyone's keen for that, let me know. Um, Let's go on. I, I just wanted to throw this up as well. I, I, I actually sent it all to you earlier, but let's pour some Jamaican rum now. And I want you to see this just so just so you understand sort of what we're building up to. So this is for me again a very important part of what we're doing. I want to, you know, I want to be the most transparent rum blend in the world right now. I want to give you the full recipe. I want to give you what's in there. So we've already had the Barbados component that makes up 35% of the blend. The guy in the component we had just had is a blend of those unaged from three to five year. Uh, so it makes up uh, together 60% of the blend. And this Jamaica that we've got to finish with. So this is a, a three year Jamaica. Uh, it just makes up 5% of the blend. It's a very small touch, but sometimes a small touch is just, just what you need to spice things up a little bit. Um, all of it's 100% tropically aged, all the aged components. It's not chill filtered. It's all like bourbon barrels. We don't add sugar, but you get trace elements from the barrel. Um, that number can be a little bit confusing sometimes. So to, to put it in real bottle terms, it works out about 0.64 grams of a litre. So under, under a gram that just comes from the trace elements aging in the barrel. And then we blend it and bottle it all in, uh, all in Scotland. So pour yourself some Jamaica and uh, Thank you, Sakinda. I, I would like to bring onto the stage Mr. Oliver Chilton, our head blender, uh, master blender, sorry. <laughs> and and I, I'd love to uh, share some of your knowledge with the rum world. So, Ollie, how are you doing? I'm good, mate. That's a big glass of Jamaican rum there. I mean, that's. Uh... I mean, it, I, feel, I feel like this would be a small glass in Jamaica. So. <laughs> that's probably true. That's probably... How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm about. Five, five tops in because I'm not following. I'm just drinking. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm looking at the comments and people are like, just like, we're we're done. We're on to the next one already. So <laughs> I'm trying to make sure we hurry it upon. But um, but yeah. So um, so said said this is a long pond. Uh, just that we're having now. So three years aged in long pond. Um, it's probably not the. I'm still. We we actually have to get this one chemically analyzed still. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's around the sort of 150 to 100 Esther mark. It's not crazy for Jamaica. It's just, you know, a nice, nice little funk in your glass and hopefully very enjoyable. So, and this is, this is the component in Finest Caribbean. It's 100% pot still as well. So. But, um, but Ollie, I would love to, uh, in, first of all, introduce you to the rum because you, you head up Elixir Distillers. You're our master blender for Black Top Rum. Um, and you're, uh, again, I think much like Skin are incredibly well known in the whiskey world, like every whiskey tasting I'm doing, I'm like, you know, Ollie, everyone's like, oh, Ollie, God, when's he back? Like, let, <laughs> let him do the tasting. Um, but 
I'd love to, for, for, those of you, for, for those in the room who don't know you already, I'd love to hear a bit more about your backstory. So like, how, how did you start lending? How did you come into all of this? What's your, what's your backstory? Uh, uh, luck, Mitch, I think is, um, luck and saying yes. I was told once, you just say yes to everything and the stuff you can't do, you fuck up badly enough and they figure it out. Um, and uh, my, I mean, I'm, I'm just a shop boy. I worked in, I worked in whiskey, whiskey shops. Oh, hello. Hey! Hey! <laughs> hey, so, so the guys in Germany are part of the back in Germany. They almost didn't get run today. And, and Jürgen from Kirsch actually gave these guys his own run pack. He like delivered it and took it over because he's an absolute sweetheart. So, uh, hey guys, uh, welcome to the party. <laughs> and, and Ollie, sorry, carry on. That's all right. Um, yeah, so I worked, I worked in, in whiskey shops or spirit shops, booze shops. Um, and I, I've had various moments of trying to discover rum, mainly resulting in really bad hangovers and empty bottles. And then um, I worked for, I ended up working for Sekinda, like you do in, in a shop in London. I just said yes a lot. Ended up working from a head office with no job description and, and a very healthy salary, thanks boss. Um, and one night when everyone had gone home and Sekinda was upset at, I don't know, somebody who hadn't done their job properly, I got shouted at and told to come here and fix this and I was given some whiskey and told go and make something out of it um I didn't really know what I was doing I actually I mean my my blending experience apart from that was making whiskey for my wedding and that was about it and afterwards Sikin said what do you want to do for a job and I went I, I'd quite like to do this and he went all right have a go and that's uh that's pretty much it I mean it's just as I say, if you if you want to have a go at something, you just say so, and then hopefully someone really nice in the turban says, "Yeah, you can have a go. You know, what? it won't be so bad." Um, and then uh, the whole rum thing, Sekinda's pretty much forced that on me. I, rum's such a scary category. Like I'm not. Ollie, I'm not, you make everything sound my, so romantic. This is my favorite, my favorite master blender ever. This is my favorite master blender of all time. Right, well, the thing is, I right, take your bar, though, right? You've got. You've got an immense amount of rum, right? Now, I've worked in whiskey 15 years of my life. I could walk into any whiskey bar and be pretty comfortable. I'm pretty sure I feel going into your bar like most people feel walking into a whiskey bar. You're like, gee, there's so many things. And I remember going into rum blending and being told, like, let's make something. And Sekinda took me down to our bar and laid out every rum you can imagine for, to try to understand and the flavor profiles are it's not just they're diverse right whiskey's diverse there's lots of flavors of whiskey they're so extreme like everything's big and it's imposing like the flavors so what, are... what whiskey are we talking about uh what <laughs> last one? you mean because you know whiskey has no rules no international rules just, <laughs> just want to throw that in there just i in agree 100 percent, 100 percent. um <laughs> but the, the the like if you take you take the Jamaican rum, which is not not even the the most ester heavy rum, and you compare it to to the rums from Guyana, they're chalk and cheese, and they're amazing flavors and they're really big. So it's it I, I find that as as a category, I find that fascinating. I think it's it's amazing to have so much range in flavor in out of essentially three ingredients well three ingredients plus dunder plus but you know three ingredients it's yeah. and it and it's it's fascinating to watch that story as well because you know seeing i i remember when i first started and i was like what 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 were you trying to create with with black top finest caribbean like what were you what were we trying to make was it for a daiquiri was it for a mai tai was it, was it this and your answer is just like no like, <laughs> like like what what was your vision what were you trying to create i'm trying to make a drink i i don't really understand like <laughs> <laughs> so you you i kind of believe you've got you got kind of two types of companies you can have marketing led i think like ian talked about this earlier you have marketing led companies and they they make a prediction of what people want to drink like they, they say, this is what they want to drink. Uh, and they say to their blender, or, and they go make that. Go make 
what people want to drink, what we think people want to drink. We're not, we're, we're drinkers. So, I mean, we started off with a, a concept. I remember very early days, we said, we'll try and make uh, a sipping rum that's really good to mix with, that's fun, but won't be too sweet, which is basically writing a brief of things that are not possible to put together. Um, and I said to, <laughs> I remember working with a, a really a good friend of mine, and every stage I'd give him what we were working on and say, could you mix with it? And, and he'd tell me what I was doing wrong. And I spoke to him afterwards, after we launched Finest Caribbean. And I said, what do you think of the end blend? And he goes, well, it's probably not what you set out to make, but it's a good representation of yourselves. You know, it's, it, it is, a, it, it's for drinking. And I don't think we could make any, any spirit. We couldn't work in any spirit in any other way. Um, so you, uh, yeah, I'd love to be probably more professional and probably more conceptual. <laughs> but in the but, end, but Ollie, we did. Sorry, we did have guidelines in terms of we wanted to take black tot or last consignment and sort of reverse engineer it. So keep the heart, i.e., Barbados, Jamaica, Guyana. That was in our in our minds. That was really the key. You know, we so, could have used lots of other different rums and styles, but. We were sort of deconstructing Black Tot, last consignment and making a rum for today, you know, but still complex, layered, interesting, drinkable. I, th I think that I think the big thing there, Skinder, and you're right, is is layered. That was probably top. And again, it goes back to drinking, right? So I drink an awful lot of whiskey, not surprisingly, and whiskey's as a category there's a lot there's, it's very layered it's it's all about different flavors and you do find that certainly in um in last consignment um and i definitely wanted that i think if i had to write down the one thing we wanted more than anything was a development of flavors as you drink um and i, th I think we've got that i think we've done that really well with finest caribbean so, so let's at this point because uh, some of you might still be on jamaica other than the the road let's find this Caribbean now. Done. Let's pour some finest Caribbean because we're, we're talking about it. So let's let's drink some. Now, just just take a moment. How how great is it that we're all going to drink some rum together? I'm just I'm just so grateful that we get to do one nice thing together before the end of 2020, and then next year we'll do all of this in real life at trailer at scotty's at dirty Dead. oh yeah let's, let's get around the world and just actually make this happen in real life i can't wait till we have that again but but yeah it's such a such a place to have you all here um so this is this is everything coming together and and ollie i i'd i'd love to get your sort of understanding because the way i i often think about rumblings and and i think how probably a, a bartender might think about rumblings like Blending rums is, is not uncommon in the rum world. We're, we're famed for it. We're famed for it in our cocktails. We're famed for it in like Don the Beach and, and Trade of Vic. We're blending rums together. And, and in the bartender mindset, I think we often go back to 1934 Don the Beach camera and go, that's when rum blending started, you know? Forget the Navy who were blending it for another 130 years before that. Like we started it because we're bartenders, you know? But like rum, rum blending, pulling all these different countries and flavors together has, has happened for, for things for so long. And being able to carry on this tradition and put these flavors together now is, is a, again, something which I, I, I as, as I understand it, you don't have the same liberty and the same freedom to in the whiskey world. So I'm, I'm interested when you put these together, I know I would look at it from a flavor component. Like if I was making a cocktail and I go, right, okay, I need some fruity notes that will come from Barbados. I need some spice and funk that will come from the Jamaica. I need some like chocolate and licorice that will come from the Guyana. I'll put those, I'll put those three rums together and that will make my drink sing the way I want it to. What, what's it like on, on the blender side? What's it like when you're putting this in a bottle? So I guess there's, there's two aspects to that. The first is that any blending, regardless of rum, whiskey, whatever, is touchy feely, right? It, it's not scientific. You think it should be, you always, always write down what you're going to do and say, this is what we're going to do. And we're going to add this and this and this, and it will taste like this. And then you do it and you're like, no, no, that does not taste how I thought it does. So then you adjust it and you adjust it and you tweak it and you tweak it. 
Um, and I think that's true in any spirits category I've ever, I've ever had the pleasure of working with. And it's true at almost any level. I've, I've had rare opportunities to, to do blending with, with actual professionals, like, you know, people at, at the Azure, et cetera. And, and it's no different, right? You, you, think, you think, well, a big company, or they'll, they'll, they'll definitely have like, they'll have a computer that tells them what to do. And then you do it with them. And, and that, the only difference between them and me is that their computer links to their scales. So it automatically feeds mm. the spreadsheet. I have to type it in. <laughs> uh, but outside of that, it, it's a quite a touchy feely process. In terms of this particular ram and, and where we started with, I think there's a little bit of, certainly on my part, there was naivety. So I did that session with Sikinda and I tried all these rums and then you write, I write down what I thought things were. But the most fun thing for me is I'm always discovering something new because it's, it's a whole new world, right? So every day I try a rum and it's not what I thought it was. Mm. Or it's not what I think it should be. You look at the production map and you go, well, this is how they produce it. So it should taste like this. And then you try it and go, no, 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 that's not what it is. So every ingredient is, it's like going to a spy shop and all, all the tickets are wrong and all the names are different. <laughs> and you end up having to work purely on a basis of taste, which yeah. is actually the most free and wonderful way to work. Yeah. So like when we started Finders Caribbean, a lot of the components, we didn't really know much about them. Like we said what we wanted, as Sakina said, like we want to use these bases, we want these kind of styles. But a lot of the conversations were, well, what do you want it to taste like? And like you point to that non-age at, at the start. That came about because I wrote down, this is what I want it to taste like. That This is it, this is, this is what it has to taste like. And I remember trying it on its own on the bench and being like, this is mental. This is, this is, not, this is not normal rum. And we had to use it. And it wasn't until after the fact that we got called, but like, um, so it's got coloring in it. And I was like, okay, how much? And I, well, we, we don't know. So we sent it for chemical analysis and it came back, it's got wood sugars. So I'm then phoning up going, well, what you said? And they go, well, we're not exactly sure how it's colored. <laughs> and, and they said, do you, the, the end question was, do you care? And I was like, no, because it tastes the way I want it to taste. And again, that's probably pretty naive. Like if I said that, as, as you guys were alluding to earlier, if I was on Ministry of Rum and I wrote that down, I'd be told of some kind of nut job who didn't, didn't care about, I just care what it tasted like. I didn't, I'm not, I'm not here to judge people. And it's the same on the sugar thing. So it's, this is a relatively dry rum. We don't add sugar to it. We don't add sugar because I don't, I don't drink particularly sweet drinks. Yeah. Right? That's, that's where that comes from. It does not come from a judgment on sugar is bad because it's, Definitely not. There are lots of drinks that are really good with sugar in them, mm. but it's not what I would drink. And so I, think, I think I just heard Ministry of Rum exploding again. So I think <laughs> okay, it's gone. Well, down. I mean, it comes down to that. It's that thing, and I think I think you and I've had this conversation before. It's a, it's a, it. This is not a, Finest Caribbean is not a piece of history, right? Finest Caribbean is a drink. So therefore you make it to be drunk. You don't make it to sit on a back bar. You don't make it to look good in a magazine. You make it so it tastes nice. And then people hopefully drink lots of bottles of it. Yeah. Hopefully. The other, the, the other thing is, even when we were, you know, working on the blend, we had so many iterations of it. And I think, you know, one, one simple example is the Jamaican component, which in this case is 5%. We tried it with four, five, six, seven, eight. And you know, they were all really good. But for us, this is the one that worked. This is the one we felt was more, you know, more for everyone. Yeah. But they were all good. But it was, but it also that that was the other thing. I was I was blown away how little such a small change little makes such a big difference. Big difference. In your and it's the same in 50th. So when you look at the recipe, you'll see things. Yeah. Like five percent you'd be amazed how different like one percent would do or Half 25 i mean it's it's insane um because they're, yeah. they're big flavors De dean callum just asked if we could share this recording to ministry of rum and i fucking love that idea <laughs> <laughs> i've not had any hate mail in a week so i'm okay i'm <laughs> 
No, it's wonderful. Um, guys, please throw up in the comments. Let us know what you think of Finest Caribbean, if it's, uh, especially if it's the first time you're trying it. I, I know a lot of you may have had it already, but, um, but yeah, this, is, this was like a, a two-year two year project. Of, two, two years. Um, I think I wrote down there's, there's 26 official recipes. But then there's a lot of, like, because of the way we ended up working, Again, we, we pretty much broke a system. So, you know, we were working with Skier and they, they were basically saying, right, you tell us what we want. We'll make some samples for you. We'll send them out. You taste them, you can send them back. But what was actually happening is they were sending out like three different ideas. And then I was sitting there going, well, I like that one. I like that one. And then we'd yeah. blend them together and then we'd re-blend it. And then I'd get angry phone calls going, can you stop doing that? Because it's really difficult to figure out what you did at the other end. And then we'd fly over and we'd do it, like just spend a day. And none of those recipes get recorded. So, <laughs> so this is, and I think this is a really important part, which we've kind of, we kind of just glossed over because I guess we, we, we talked about that a lot already. But um, the, the average rum blend, most, most rum blenders, we, we would just go to Skia or Yeshia in, in Amsterdam, we'd give them a, a, a profile, give them a recipe and say, please send us something that tastes kind of like this what what was that process like because i know we've got a, a lot of a, a lot of rum geeks here who would love to know what that actually looks like in, in practice and how it was different with, with you here i think i mean in practice I, well i don't know in practice because again it comes i guess it comes from a, a little bit of a different background so we're used to buying bulk spirit i buy i buy an awful lot of bulk whiskey every year and i'm used to working in, in bulk spirit where we own all the spirit. So we normally, we will normally call up samples of our own stock and that's what we're working with. And this was the first time we'd been working with a supplier of kind of aged spirit for blending. And, and um, to give everyone a, a, a sort of idea of this, if you're not familiar, EH year is pretty much the world's like yeah. library of rum and, and large <laughs> rum brokers. So, so, and a lot of these components you can only get through going as well. So yeah, I mean, they're, they're, their entire job is consistency. It's, like, it's a really like it's a really clever thing. So what yeah. they do is they'll create consistent ingredients because in the same way you have with whiskey in, in rum, you know, no cask is the same, right? And like 50th is a very extreme example of that. So because no cask is the same. Come on, don't drink the 50th yet. Hold on. To, <laughs> I know some of you are skipping ahead. I know some of you. Hold on, we're drinking that together. <laughs> if, if you if you think of it this way, you want to make a consistent. You want to try and make consistent blends so it's the same. You call up a load of rum. Like if I call up a load of whiskey casks, they're all different. Um, and if you're doing small batches, it's pretty much a nightmare. What Skier do is is they'll create mini blends for you, like small mini blends of styles, and those are the same. So it's like creating a paint. With like a paint color that you can use as opposed to individually you know having to put together your own paint um <laughs> actually really helpful and really really in some ways a lot easier than anything i'd ever done yeah. i think mostly what they do is people will turn up and they'll say give me a rum of this style and they deliver that rum of that style and that's it that's the job done it's a relatively simple i remember speaking to cast and he said this is both both one of the most challenging uh relationships i've had most enjoyable relationships he's had um, <laughs> that we just couldn't we couldn't leave alone and I think the idea of leaving it alone was it's just not in our nature so it, it was just um, it was always looking for those small tweaks on what you could do um, to just make it slightly better and I think we're still doing that today I'm, I'm even drinking it now going I wonder if I had like I'm looking behind me I've got a bottle of hand and I was like I wonder what happens if I do that and then <laughs> I think an, an important point is, you know, we've discussed, Ollie and me have discussed this a lot, that actually this product is still work in progress. It's a living, breathing product where, you know, even our components change, even though they try and give us consistency, they can vary and change. So even though this is our recipe, that recipe may tweak one or two percent up or down with every single batch we do. But for us, we are still trying to evolve it. You know, we're still trying to learn and see, can we improve it a little bit? And if so, how, what can we do? So it's interesting. I think the other really nice thing which um, Cher said to us was, he goes, 
this is probably the most complicated project I've ever done. You're the most fussiest buggers I've ever met. <laughs> but you know what? It's been the most enjoyable product project I've ever worked on. He goes, because people are simplistic, as, as Oli says. They come to you with a brief, and we deliver that brief, and it's, e it's ABC. But we came up with, what, 26 iterations back and forth over the course of those nearly two years. Uh, and the, the, I think the nice thing was we took the individual components and we came up with the recipe. Is that fair, Ali? Yeah, I mean, there was lots of back and forth. It's a really lovely relationship. I think in some ways, for me, it was, it was a, great, a great experience to learn with. I, I would argue that Carsten's a genius when it comes to blending. I learned an awful lot from him. Um, I think as a as a company, we've learned a lot about the category through doing this. We learned about like for me, it's it's been learning about the different parts, the different. You know, as you say, Mitch, is about bringing out different islands, different areas, different producers, different distillers, and seeing what you can do with them. So it's been a really fascinating journey, and it's nice that we're continuing that. Like even in even in finest Caribbean, we're still continuing that learning and still continuing what we and developing, which is you know, that's what it's all about. I don't have, sadly, I don't have Sly or Ian's uh, hundreds of years of, of experience behind a bar to, to lean on. So I'll steal that from them later. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure if we tell them where the whiskey ball is, uh, he'll, <laughs> they will come <laughs> readily and help, help us drink and blend and put things together. Um, guys, uh, thank you so much. I, I hope everyone's enjoying the Finest Caribbean um, because this is, this is, you know, this is Ollie's masterpiece. It's something that he's, he's, he's worked for these two years on and, and put, as, as we said, 26 different blends together uh, to get to this. And I, I really hope you enjoy it as much as I do. You know, I, I've, I have very much, uh, I've always believed that the most important thing uh, you have, to, you need as a brand ambassador is to love what you're drinking and to be able to drink it every day. Because if you didn't love it, you would, you would not last very long. You know, it would not be an enjoyable job drinking something every day that you didn't didn't love. And, and I think it's absolutely incredible blend. I think it's um, something wonderful. I can't wait for, for all of your bars and, and everyone to find out about it. But, um, but we are here tonight to discuss a new, a new baby, a new member of the family. Um, and it's something that, um, you know, I've, I, I want to bring everyone in now with, with Sikinder and uh, Sly and Liam as well. Like, I want, want to bring us all of, all of this chat because we're, we're about, to, about to share with you our, our newest member, the 50th anniversary, which I am so unbelievably proud of for so many reasons. I think it's a delicious rum blend and I think it's something incredible to drink. I'm very proud of what we're doing with uh, from a transparency point of view and we're going to talk about that as well. Um, but I guess, you know, this is, this, this for me, is a, a, you know, this is the first time we're getting experience from all of you and, and getting getting everyone's feedback all together. And you know, it's, it's hard to do when we're not in the room together. You don't have that same feedback. You can't see the reaction of everyone face right, right the same unless I flick screens really quickly. Um, but we also have, do, do we still have John Hume somewhere in the room here? Do we still have uh, our Navy rum purser somewhere <laughs> hiding in the background by any chance? John, is he still here? We, we're gonna, gonna have a quick scan through. We've got like almost 90 people here. So, ah, ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce you to former Royal Navy, Jack Dusty, uh, stores accountant, one of the people responsible for giving out the rum ration at the Royal Navy up until Black Top Day. Uh, he quit very soon afterwards, and we're not sure if it's related or not, uh, but I'd love to, to introduce you to, uh, to Mr. John Hume. John, how are you doing tonight? Have we, have we got him unmuted? Oh, let's see if we can work it out. It's been very quietly. This is the quietest John has ever been in his life. He's, uh, he's never. <laughs> Let's see if we can unmute him. You got that little mic on the bottom left, John. Oh, 
wait, you wait till we get him online. There'll be no stopping him. We'll have to kick him out of the room. <laughs> I'm loving John's camera. John, uh, John yeah. give, you, give your camera away. <laughs> there we go. So he can hear us. He can hear us. John, for some reason, your microphone's not working. Are you trying some new fang newfangled technology here? <laughs> Right, we're going we're gonna to leave John for a second whilst, uh, whilst he figures out his mic. And in the meantime, we're going we're gonna to have a little chat about. But first of all, Sly, I want to come back to you for a second. Rumblings in a bar, is it necessary? Is, is there a point? Is there a reason why you want them? Because, like, not being funny, I remember the zombie blend at Trailer Happiness, and yep. you guys are proficient at rum blending yourself. So what, what is, you know, where does a blend come into it? Why would you have that tool when you're asking? Well, yes, short answer is yes, absolutely a blend is, but not just a blend, a good blend. You know, a good blend is essential. And I think, again, um, a lot of the producers are, are creating rums that bartenders need, you know, um, in terms of, you know, creating drinks. If you can get, if you can get half of that work out of the way, if, if you can get a rum that's already where you need it to be, or at least most of the way there, it just saves you a lot of time. So at the moment, there are rum blends coming out, which are perfectly suited for daiquiris or perfectly suited. But you know what I mean? If it's not like there are rums that are, that are ready to go. Back in the day, you might have to tweak it a little bit. You might have to, you know, it's not quite to your liking. And I think that, you know, with blends, with blend, especially like this, like Black Tot is essentially a, it's a navy blend, right? And there's a reason why those blends work so well in cocktails because they cut through a lot of the multitude of ingredients in there, the fruit juice and everything else, and they retain their complexity throughout. So yes, blends are 100% necessary. As a bar owner, I'm very grateful for them because it's it's time and effort to do your own blend. Like you can do your own blend, but every bartender can and will do their own rum blends, right? But it's time and effort. So if you can get something that kind of does it all for you pretty much out of the bottle, then that's it. That's incredible. And there are a few examples of that, of which, like I say, um, Black Tot is one. Um, I'm not sure if I'm ready to, to mix the 50th anniversary yet, but you know, you never, <laughs> you never know. You, you know. Um, it's, my, it's my birthday, guys. New Year's Eve. Yeah, December 31st. Yeah. It's my I mean, birthday. Two bottles. Two bottles. Yeah. Have to so like two, two I'm just saying there, are, there, are, you know, there are quite a few people in here who would be disappointed if somebody, if somebody didn't send me some rum. For my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Send, send fly rum. He needs more rum over there. Um, I've got no rum here. Can you see this? Look, it's run out. It's also, it's also, uh, it's also Sergio's birthday on Wednesday. He needs the rum, and uh, my birthday last week. I need more rum, so you know we all need more rum. Right? Sergio, Sergio will be happy with some Bacardi uh, Carta Blanca. Just send him a bottle of that. It's fine. Sergio's fine. He's got a cat and a wife. Yes, it's it. fine. He's got a cat, a wife. Just give him some Carta Blanca. Make a couple of daiquiris. He'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> With a, with a float of try of the year on top. So one of the questions that I have, and this is the sort of Sly and Ollie, Ollie, well, all of you actually, because you know, one of the things that you said to me with the 50th, and please guys, don't drink it all, even if you're on that camera, don't drink it all because we're gonna have a little place together at the end. I need you to say a little bit of fun to the end. You know, one, thing, know, one of the guys you said with the 50th was, that it won't taste good, really, or not won't taste as good as it can do until like another six months to a year. Um, Ollie, I know we've talked about like marrying times and how long it takes for a blend to sit together. And then, you know, in a bar, often I've been in a bar, I've looked at the rum shelf and gone, shit, okay, well, I need like four or six rums to blend together and I'm going to put this in the and this and that, and that's kind of what a lot of things do. So, so what, what kind of experience is like, and how much does that blend time really affect the flavour, how much is going to marry and how much matter? 100%, it's massive. I mean, do you want to go, do you want to, want to go first? For my part, I'll be really quick. Yeah, I'll be really quick. Like it's, 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 it's massive, you know. Um, the thing about rum and any rum producers, reason that rum blends exist 
is because rum is an organic substance. It does what it wants. You know what I mean? You can put technically the same liquid in various barrels and they will take completely different trajectories, right? They will, they will go where they want to go and end up where they want to end up. So it's essential that you understand the, the craft of blending. You know, if you, I mean, listen, some single barrels are, are perfect. And someone like Luke will go and he'll identify single barrels all day long, right? And it's one barrel, this barrel is amazing. But generally speaking, if you want to have the profile that you want to have, you're going to have to blend and mix. And you're going to have to, it's like, it's like an equalizer, right? You're going to take some, some of the bass down, you're going to do the mid range, the treble, like, you're going to have to equalize um, that blend. And so, yes, blending and marrying is incredibly important because rum evolves and it does what it wants to do all the time. So, you know, um, if, you, if you want, I mean, if, you know, if you don't care, it's fine. If you try to have a consistent product, then you are going to have to really um, think about how that rum sits together over a period of time. I mean, well, I mean, the uh, slide just, uh, the, I would challenge any whiskey drinker out there that drinks single malt whiskey. Just remember, single malt whiskeys are blends. Yeah. <laughs> single malt whiskeys are blends. Just remember that. Down to the, it's all about the hand, correct? It's all about the hand of the master blender and what he or she, what's called the size to actually create and put out there. They just, it's just about their expression of the, of the paint that you have for their particular painting. And when you're doing single malts or you're doing blends of rums, you have different expressions of flavor and profile that you want to use in your final blend. So whether it's from 100% pot still from one single distillery, whether it's from a blend of pot still and column still from one single distillery, um, whether it's from 200 casts that have now been whistled down to like 50 casts because of tropical aging, the, the master blender has that in their, in their repertoire to actually create an amazing product. So again, this whole idea of blend or the, the notion of blend is inferior is bullshit. And even That's Secundu, right. yeah, correct. Yeah. Thank you, Secundu. And I know I'm always listening to you because you, know, you push me on that way towards Rumfest back should, in 2007. You should listen to me more, Ian. I do, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, yeah, blends are great. Blends are actually yeah. great because you're at the mercy of the person that wants the artist that wants to create that spirit exactly. that's going to tantalize our palate. So. You can get lucky, like you can get lucky by just leaving yeah. rum alone. Yeah. You know Especially what I mean? If you're and it on a vintage and be like, this is great. But seriously, when you really like go in and, and the Blacktop 50th, the Blacktop 50th is so like. It is so good. Every time I try it, I am seriously, listen, I know you got me here on this conversation, but I, I'm a friend of rum, of all rum. So I have no vested interest in like hyping up this rum. But generally, I ordered a bottle, it's on the bar now, and I just ordered another two bottles. Because I'm like, mm, it's good stuff. No. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I need this to be available at all times. This is a really, really, <laughs> it's a really, really good blend, guys. Congratulations. Are we toasted? Am I allowed to drink this yet? We've been here for a minute. Can I can we drink the 50th yet or not? So, uh, so, okay, well, let's, let's speak together for a second. Because, uh, um, by the way, Ian, Dawn mentioned that she thinks uh, you're, you might be buying global whiskey. <laughs> you might be adding that to your CV. <laughs> um, well, Dawn's my new manager, so uh, yeah, I can, I can add that. I can add that to uh, my CV, Dawn. <laughs> guys, I, I, I would. Um, Ollie Sakinda, was there anything last to add on to to marry before before we all drink the fiftieth together? I'm trying to tease you out. Of <clears throat> but. I get. I guess on marrying, the only thing is what I found with rum. Is because you've got so many complex flavors, it needs more time. Like I could not get over how much time we needed, which is why it's now December and <laughs> we're drinking this. Um, because it sorry, John, who uh ordered this for his birthday in July. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> not it's all right down. Now, John, so it's okay. <laughs> it's, because, it's because you you can blend those flavors together and then you'll get lots of different flavors, which can be fantastic, but what you want is you want that journey, you want it to be layered together. And I, I find rum, you just need, it needs time to sit, marry, to develop exactly like Sly said, you know, it's, it's its own thing, it'll take its own time, it'll do it its own way. Um, and it changes, like, the, my God, from, from that to bottle, 
was a world apart. And then from the first bottle we got off the line, which we opened, and I went, it's really good. And Sikinda went, still there's something. And then we left it another month. It was like, oh, now it's good. And now I'm coming back, what, another month? Another month in, I've opened another one and gone, yeah, yeah, it's really special. It, it definitely, it just keeps on changing, keeps on changing. I think from my side, like, if I look at Last Consignment, Last Consignment's now 10 years old, yeah? We launched it on the 40th anniversary. We're now at the 50th anniversary. And I've been trying that rum for the last 10 years, you know, multiple times a year. And it was really good when we bottled it. But every time I try it, it just seems to get better and better and better because it's so many components. You know, we, we blended thousands of uh, demijohns together. And for all those flavors from all those demijohns to harmonize, to mellow out, to integrate, you know, has taken all this time. And when we look at Black Top 50 years, you know, we've used so many different rums. We've used old rum, we've used young rum. And actually that's very difficult to do. Normally what people do is always, you know, it's age led. So you either got a young product or you've got an old product. How many products do you know which is using really old rum and young rum? Very, very few, yeah? Um, I remember Oli put it beautifully um, uh, recently when he goes, you know, how did we put Black Top 50th together? What was the brief? What was our feeling? So what we didn't want to do, we didn't want to recreate Last Consignment because Last Consignment is Last Consignment. You know, it's the original. There's no point in trying to copy the original. We've got the original, yeah? What we wanted to do was we wanted to create something using amazing old rums and amazing young rums, things which we dream about, things which we want to drink every day and take the best of the best from a broad spectrum, you know, like the original Royal Navy blend, like the, like Coroni, like, you know, 42 year old Demerara and, you know, other components and put them all together in different ways. So, you know, again, this took a bit of work. Um, and I think we've done a superb job. Ollie's done a superb job. You know, I worked with him quite closely and we're very, very pleased because we wanted to create something in the middle between Finest Caribbean and Last Consignment, which you could just, you just want to drink. You know, you want to drink the whole bottle in one sitting. <laughs> In reality, yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm so excited for this. Uh, um, so, right, let's let's get on to it. Let's. Um, I'm gonna see if uh, John Hume is ready. Um, our, uh, our wonderful talk team, led by Adele tonight, is also managing this in the background. We'll see if uh, we'll see if John Hume is ready to do his little toast. If we can get the mic working or not. Um, but uh, I, I guess as a sort of side note, uh, for those of you who haven't met John yet, he's um, he, he's one of the first people that I met when I started with Black Tart. I had this wonderful email come through saying, uh, you know, I used to serve rum in the Royal Navy and um, uh, I gave it out for this many years and I'd love to find a bottle for the 50th anniversary. And we, we started talking, we've become like pen pals. And I'll, I'll give you an idea of how amazing uh, uh, and funny a guy John is because his, his stories are incredible. And the other day he, um, he sent me a, he was like, oh, I've, sent you, um, I've sent you a drink for your birthday. I was like, okay, thanks John. And he's like, you haven't said thank you yet. Like I, I, tried to, uh, I tried to send you a drink. You haven't said thank you, this costs money. And I was, I was so worried. I was like, oh shit, I haven't been in the office for a few days. Like, let me get in, I'll, I'll check this envelope. Let me find what's going on. So I get this envelope, right? And I'm like, okay, well, it doesn't, it doesn't look like there's a drink in it. Shit, okay, maybe, maybe there's, I don't know, let me open it and see. And I open this letter from John and it's this wonderful like handwritten letter. And at the top of it, oh, let's see if wonderful handwritten letter. And at the top, he's just stapled a tea bag on. He's like, I got you a drink. <laughs> this is, 
this is John here. I'm really hoping his mic's working because I'd love to. I'd love to have you lead us in this little bosun's call for this last run tonight. No, it's it's still not coming. Uh, oh man. Well, we will we will make sure we we we're, we're gonna do whatever we can to make John John Hume present at all our run events. <laughs> Mitch, can I just say one thing? Yeah, guys, I know you know how to drink rum and drink, but one thing I will say is. This is such a big, complex, beautiful rum. Keep it on your palate for a good 10 seconds. Yeah. The longer you leave it in your mouth, the bigger and more luscious it becomes. You know, your saliva takes away the alcohol and you get the real flavors. That's what she and said. I think it's, seriously, just keep it there as long as you can. Guys, um, I want to I want to share with you all just quickly because I know you've all got the sample bottles there. Um, this is what the this is what the the actual bottle looks like, and this is the back label. And I want to throw up for you now the actual back label so you can see this because I am I am so excited about this. If you if you if you're following me on on Instagram or anything like that, you'll you'll see how much I talk about this label. I'm I'm so excited about it because. It is one of the first times, oh, let me see if I can actually pull it up. <laughs> Got too many tabs open as usual. Hold on, here we go. This is, this is the back label on our bottle. And <coughs> I'm so proud of this. And, and Ollie and I went back and forth for many, many <laughs> hours across many weeks and months discussing what we would put on there and, and how we would break this down. Um, <laughs> And and for me, you know, sort of taking what I said to you at the start about how I don't I don't I don't believe it should be a secret recipe. I believe the way you appreciate a rum blend is to know exactly what went in it and see these incredible distilleries and these incredible places that the rum has come from. And um, seeing things like the tropical versus continental aging, the breakdown between those two. Um, knowing the distillery, being able to shout out the distillery is a great honor as well because you know they don't let you do it unless they're they're, they're happy with the rum as well. Um, and for me, like as as I know, for every rum lover looking at this right now, you guys are just going to be geeking out over the distilleries and the stills and what's gone into this. It's just ridiculous, you know. Like to, to be fair, Mitch, when you asked for this. I'm pretty sure I only had about five components. And I thought, <laughs> how hard can it be? And then every time I went to Zakinda with another sample and said, I think I'm I think I'm close, he'd be like, Oh, could you just make it a bit more like, could you make it taste older? And I'd say, I've got some 42-year-olds, yeah, yeah, use that. Use try that, try some of that. And then I'd sit there and be like, it's not dusty enough. It doesn't taste like, you know, like old navy rum. Well, we could put some flagons in it and see if that does it. Um, so yeah, we had no idea it would be this mental <laughs> when you asked us to do it. But again, you know, we've, I know it says 42 year old, half a percent and original Navy blend, half a percent. But honestly, the difference between half a percent and 1% was crazy. Yeah, It didn't work. We lost well, our blend. Well, the 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 biggest like I know Mitch, you were going to talk about this anyway, so I'm going to interrupt you. But the biggest thing was the Hamden. <laughs> this is actually a second. It's a great story. Lesson. Everyone, everyone, just quickly look at how much percent of the Hamden is in there, so everyone can see the eight percent of Hamden in there. So and we share this story. So we, I got I got a call. Obviously, in in normal times, like non non COVID times, the plan was to vat the rum i'd be at i'd be at the hall when we vat it i taste it from the vat and then if we wanted to make any adjustments we'd start adjusting then and we always take up extra stocks so we took up extra rum of everything but we couldn't do that right we couldn't travel so the rum it, it all happened all the vatting happened no one's getting blamed apart from our op operations manager who got blamed no come on it um, and we sent out <laughs> We, we basically, I think we sent up like two, it's either two casks of Hamden. I think we sent two casks of Hamden, especially one, one and a half casks or something like that. In any case, all of it got dumped into the blend, everything. So when the VAT sample came down, I was like, it's not right. And I took it to Sekinda and he looked at me and goes, what do you think? And I was like, it's not, 
it's not right. And he goes, it's not right. This is, this is wrong. There's something wrong. Um, I think there was basically a lot of accusation that I'd fucked up in a big way. And then um, I went and got all of the reports and it said, we've dumped all of your Hamden into the, into the blend. And it was one of those moments, which I've had now three times, three times across my career of, of screaming, actual screaming, as you realize that you've, you've put too much of something into something, you need to fix it. So I then spent about a week firstly begging for extra casks of stuff, like extra, whatever I could buy of the other components I bought, and then messing around. Um, I think in the end, we ended up in a better place. Like I genuinely think the end blend we ended up with was much, Agreed. much better. Agreed. But we also ended up with a lot more liquid and we'd only bought enough dry goods for 5,000 bottles. That was it. So there was a realization we had about a, about a third too much rum. Um, and I didn't have a long enough straw to get to Glasgow. So it wasn't like we could just start drinking. Um, <laughs> so we, yeah, we, we ended up re racking a third of the rum. But the, the end result is the component, like, like that hand in, the extra percentage isn't huge when you actually look at it on the paper, but the flavor difference is, is astronomical. Like it's a whole yeah. new one. Well, it's, it's like if you, if you were cooking and just like the lid off your salt, right. your chili just came off and like now it just tastes of that thing. Like of all of those components that there could be too much of, Hampton would be <laughs> just like flavor bomb just to blow out the whole rest. And it's... Yeah. It also meant we had to go find more more flagons that fitted the profile, which was really frustrating. And like all, <laughs> use more forty two year old rum. Sorry, Sekinda. Um, and <laughs> so so yeah, I mean it is a it's a ridiculous ridiculous blend of rum. And uh, and and this is a question that I wanted to throw up right right here and now, Ollie, because we had. Um, uh, we, we had, as, as you know, we have very passionate rum forums and people saw this label and they were very excited by the label and they're very excited about the transparency, which I'm very proud of. Um, but then we, we had people who were like, well, it's only 0.5% of the 42 year, it's only 0.5% of the flagons. Like, does it really make a difference? Has, has he just like, and I think this is a whiskey term, has he just teaspooned it? Um, yeah. I, I got some interesting results on that on Urban Dictionary, but has he just teaspooned <laughs> the blend? And I was like, no, try, try the before and after, which they can't, but try the before and after and, and you can see the difference. Like what? Well, three people can if they come to the office. I've got about, I, I, I kept about a 10 CL of almost everything we did. Um, it makes a massive difference. So the, the first bit we put in was actually, uh, it's in the wrong order, but the first bit we put in was the, the Navy blend. And we did that because all of the last consignment to me tastes, it's got a flavor of, uh, of old books, dusty floors. Like it's, it's, it's quite common in, in old whiskey to get this, this dusty floorboards and church pews. I, I think it's actually probably more to do with sitting in flagons for like 50 years, essentially. And I, I, I wanted that. I wanted it to taste like dusty. Floor. I wanted a flavor where you had that, that slight essence of old. And then the other thing was the, the other 0.5 is obviously the 42 year old. And that came from Sekinda. Sekinda said to me, like, it needs to have that, that aged bitterness. Like there's a bitterness to aged rum more than anything I've ever tried. I recently went for a whole spate of single cast samples of like 30 plus year old rums from Guyana and they've all got this, this bitterness that it, it's so, it, it takes you to a place. Um, and so you can say, I want that, I want an essence of that. And so we literally sat there with it. I just sat there with a pipette, adding a bit and 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 go, right, there it is. And then I'll add a bit and 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 see where it goes. But we still needed it to be fresh. so using a percent would have been too much. And that sounds really stupid, but 1% was too much. It, it made it, it pushed it over an edge where it was no longer fun. It was no longer fruity. Um, and the same with the dustiness. You don't want too much of that. Um, it's nice to sit on an evening when it's 
dark outside and there's a big fire and you're sitting drinking a very expensive old rum, that's great. But you don't want that every day. We want it every day, but we wanted a bit of what you get when it's rich and opulent. So I hope we got that balance. That, I mean, balance is the most important thing. Like balance is what we were looking for. And it, it was a case of sitting with a, a really stupid pipette that I basically sat in the room doing that a lot. <coughs> I think uh, as an example, as a comparable uh, to whiskey, one of the most successful, most popular blends in the world is Johnny Walker Blue Label. Yeah. Now, Johnny Walker Blue Label, what is it? It's exactly like this. It's got young whiskey and it's got components of really, really old whiskey to give it a beautiful balance, you know, of freshness, of layers of complexity, of texture, of that feeling of it being really, really old. You know, people ask, how old is Johnny Blue? Nobody knows. Yeah, it's probably got 10, 12 year old whiskies, plus it's got 50, 60 year old whiskies. Yeah, it's the same. Johnny Walker Blue is a masterpiece. And I think what we've created here will go on way decades into the future for people to say, you know, this, this, this rum blend was a masterpiece. We hope, we hope you all like it. <clears throat> So, so are we saying this is the Johnny Blue label of uh, of rum now? Is that our marketing? No, because we might get rum. We can't recreate it again. Just just for clarity, <laughs> I mean, it was a ball ache to do the first time. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a ball ache to do anything next yeah. year. But the um, I won't. We won't be able to do it the same because we used single casks. So when we went up and chose everything, we did everything like we we acted like an independent bottler. We went and chose casks of rum, um, which is great fun, but completely unpractical if you're going to try and repeat anything you ever want to do. So it's done once, and like the third we've got left, we're going to use that next year. But for clarity, I have no ambition to recreate this. The ambition is to do something new, do yeah. something different again to celebrate blending, to celebrate the fact that rum is the, the one category where you can go around the world, literally around the world and blend everything you like and try and put something fun together. Um, so next year, we'll, we'll use a third of this. So we've got a homage to what we did. And then... No, Ollie, we're not. I haven't told you what we're doing next year, so... <laughs> we're to keep it there. Yeah. One of the questions was, are we going to continue the anniversary blend? Answer is yes and no. We're going to create something special as an annual release each year, but we're not going to continue it as an anniversary blend. So it's not going to be the 51st anniversary blend. We're going to take an element of this to create the base for our next blend. Um, but we're going to call it probably something like the master blenders reserve because because ollie loves being called a master that right? blender, so we have no, no because it, no it's, <laughs> it's exactly what we said you know it's giving us freedom you know giving the master blender freedom to choose what he likes old young and put it together in a different way to create something which is very which is again a masterpiece i've i've, I've got to say like 51st, 52nd, 53rd would be a much easier way for people to catch it. It would. It's boring. But if, but if it winds up Ollie more, then let's call it Master Blender's Reserve and let's go for <laughs> let's lean into that. Um, but Good enough, right? Can we just be clear, right? You've got to be really old. <laughs> Not Richard Press. <laughs> okay, young, young Master Blender's Reserve. <laughs> I've got too much to learn. I'm still going to go drinking with Sly and Ian later so that I can learn about rum. Yes. <laughs> um, we waiting for you. To, 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 to give everyone a, a sort of a, a quick insight into why I'm so excited about this personally, like the whole point of Navy rum, the, the whole way the Navy used to blend their rum was they were continuously topping up the, these blending vats. Like it was Correct. an ever-evolving blend. Glasses. That, uh, 
they, they, put, they pulled it off a third of the way in. Oh, I think we've got a John Hume in the room. Um, we've got... Did you get me then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, there he is. Um, hold on one second, John. I know you've got... <laughs> I know it's going to be hard for you, but hold on one minute. Um, you know, we've got this ever-evolving blend, this ever-top-up. And for me, if we were going to do, you know, not just the historical bottling like last consignment of what the Navy blend was, but if we were to really bring the Navy blend yeah, sure. into the mo modern day and do something that ever evolves and changes and, and is continuous, this for me is that ultimate example. You know, we've got this third extra now, uh, slightly by accident, but amazingly, this is now the base of what we can create and what we can evolve in the future. And it's, you know, the idea that this, we, we can now bring back you know, the Navy blend is gone, but this black top blend of continuously evolving year on year on year and developing it is so exciting for me as a rum geek. And I hope you guys um, love it too. But if you if you have a little drop of your rum left, please. Mitch, uh, can, before we go on, can we ask the maestro, yeah. Ian Burrell, what do you think of it? Yeah. <laughs> Where is he? It, it's free, it tastes good. No, which one? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, it's no, it's, it's, it's everything everyone has said has been absolutely exemplifies exactly what the rum is supposed to be put out there. The flavors, the aromas, the layers. Um, it is one of those rums. I, I, I love the fact that you use the Johnny Walker analogy because, as laymen, sometimes we really underestimate how good Johnny Walker is. It's not a, it's not a single malt, but as I've learned from. From Jim Beveridge, <laughs> of course, uh, the, the maestro who makes you put Johnny Walker together and that type of stuff. It's not easy putting a, 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 a selection of single malts together to create a consistent and quality blend. And this is what rum has in abundance. It has the opportunity to use various blends, whether you're from your own your own country, so your distillery, your own country, or various blends from around the world. We have this in rum. Um, so this really exemplifies what a really good blended rum can taste like um, where you create various layers of flavors. And, and the great thing about it as well is you can never get bored because the new blend will be slightly different. It means you have another another conversation, another story, another story to add to that. So it keeps us interested as we get older, as we get wiser, as we're learning new things about our palates, about our, um, what we like to drink. We can develop and taste better quality or different quality start rum on those layers. So for me, uh, both blends. I'm, I'm, I'm drinking the, the, the both the blends at the end because the individual components. I'm just mixing that with coke. <laughs> uh, I'm excited. But, um, the last, but the last two, the last two, the last two blends, the 50th anniversary and, and definitely this uh, new blend is. They're up there. They're up there with some of the best liquids that you can ever put on your palate. Thank you. But now I'm doing the empty glass appreciation because that's how good they are. Now I'm pre now I'm like now I'm doing my now I'm doing my empty glass analysis. Again, that's that's another testament when you start picking up the aromas that have been coated on the glass. You need to keep topping up, Ian. Get the bottle from behind the bar. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do that, but I'm trying to make sure Sly's not looking. <laughs> Mate, stop it! I'm always looking. So, so thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, everyone for, for tonight, and thank you to our speakers for um, Please make sure if, if you have any rum or if you've drunk all the rum, pour some, something in your glass because uh, I'd love to have one final toast with you all tonight, and I, I'd love to start it off with. Uh, John, if uh, John, if you're back in in play, I'd love you to start off this toast and, and do a traditional toast, uh, and then we'll finish off the toast. This toast well. So, uh, John Hume, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hello, John. Hello, hello. Uh, our toast in, down oh. the mess deck when we drank our tart was the Queen. God bless her. The Queen. The Queen. Queen, God bless her. John, you had a little, uh, I, I once offended you by calling it a whistle, but uh, it's a bosun's call. <laughs> that, that is a bosun's call. Can, can you talk us through that? Yvonne saying hello. Yvonne saying hello. 
Can you talk us through that moment of uh, of doing the bosun's call of how that works? Yeah. I, I'm not very good at it. It's years since I learned how to do it. What what was that was that moment of, of giving the rum ration every day? Like you 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 had a little speech well, where you'd bring everyone together. How how did that start? Um, as I've said before, we just drank it. But tonight, I must admit, the different varieties of rum, the different tastes, when you taste them like that, that is a proper tasting how to do it. And um, it, it was very, very good. Now, the top that we had, we just drank it because don't forget, we had to get to dinner. So, you know, like Skinder said, hold it in your mouth. You couldn't, you know, you had to drink it down um, probably 20 seconds for the whole uh, half pint of grog. Um, but I was thinking when you were talking about the uh, the casks, I would, I'd just finished my um, commission on a survey ship and I used to carry 10 barrels of rum, that's about 400 gallons. Um, I used to issue, I don't know, 12 gallons a day. Uh, and it was seven to six months a gallon, of course. Expensive stuff, seven to six months. But very different from now. And yeah, yeah, by the yeah. way, just, just for everyone watching as well, we're going to have one little toast together in just a second. So please. Yeah. Uh, let uh, and I, I was just want, wondering, I, I'd left the ship. We was living in Shore Bay to HMS Rally down in Devonport. And I can't remember what happened to the barrels. We never had casks. We only had the barrels. And they were full. So what happened to the full barrels that went back to Clarence Yard and William Yard? They must be somewhere around. So somebody ought to go down to these Whitling Yards and have a good look round. John, I feel like you happened to those barrels. I think, uh, <laughs> I think the mystery is solved right here and now. <laughs> Anyway, it's been very interesting, Mitch. Thank you very much for the invite. Sorry, um, just just to say, they probably ended up in Scotland for whiskey. Mm. Because remember, if you go back in time and look at old records, they use rum barrels, port barrels, Calvados barrels. Yeah, but I'm talking they, about full barrels. Oh, what after what the full about the empty after they dumped them. <clears throat> well, right. I mean, it was so cheap, they probably in the uh, room down the drain. <laughs> Cleanest yeah. drains in Devonport, I think. <laughs> well, that that's it. And, and and you're right because there were there were so many full barrels because they only had three days to pretty much get rid of everything after the boats for black. Yeah, top I mean, there. I'm talking and, about. I was on one ship. Now in the 1970s, we had a navy consisting of 80 ships or something like that. Wow. On each ship, there would have been. 20 aircraft carriers to be holding 60 barrels, 2,000 litre gallons of neat rum. Where did it all go to? Some Somebody's nicked it, I know. It might, it might be Sakinda. But I didn't want to say things. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> no, very interesting. Thank you. John, John, thank you so much. It's been such a, a privilege to get to know you this year. And um, I want to try and do one last thing before we all finish up tonight. So um, I'm going to ask everyone to, to, in a second, I'm going to ask everyone to unmute. I'm going to share with you a toast that was taught to me from the guy who taught me how to bartend, Mr. Jim Wrigley. Um, and this is a toast which is... I, I love because it brings everyone together and I think it's perfect over a little glass of rum. Um, so if everyone can unmute themselves now, we're gonna do this toast. I'm gonna to say the first line. I'd like you to repeat after me and you have to do the arm movements. It's very important. So, yes. 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 Oh, I can't believe it, together. There's a lot of noise because we've got a lot of sleep. Turn on, turn on your video. Unmute except This is going to get messy. It's definitely going to get messy. All I can hear is Dean Callan. All right. See you, Bob.
Hey, Mitch! Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, no, no, Russell. Oh, baby Russell. Oh, hey, Mark, Mark. Hey, man. Come on, fellas. Put him glasses back on your face, man. I'm sorry, man. Mike, looking old, man. You're looking like everyone's granddad. You're looking like someone's granddad. Mark's looking like Uncle, Uncle Rumbus. Here's our little toast, please. Right. Uh, raise your glasses, pour something in, repeat after me. Right. There are tall ships. There are tall ships. Come on, we have to do it properly. We're rum people, right? Come on. <laughs> right? So there are tall ships. And there are tall ships. ships. And there are small ships. Happy Holland. And there are happy small Holland. ships. Oh, like you're in Bournemouth. Sail the sea. Sail the sea. But the best ship. The best ship. Our friendship. Our friendship. Our friendship. Here's you and me. I don't think Peter Holland did it properly. Yeah. He, he, he was miming. He was miming. Pete at no point was Pete giving me friendship vibes. Literally. <laughs> 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 you look like a man with no friends. Right. <laughs> 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 
I'll go again, it's fine. I'll go again. I'll do it again, it's fine. I'll pull more. Oh, no, we have to infiltrate the <laughs> oh. <all> square. Oh. <laughs> I cannot wait to see all of this with you in real life. Yes, thank you so much. That's what I do the Oh, I got muted. I was talking too much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Um, I cannot wait to do this with you all in real life at your bars, at your places. It was my, it was my dream this year that we got to bring the run world together a little bit and, and do something really community focused. And I, I honestly, when the year started, I thought we'd do that in person. Uh, we, we had to adapt. And I hope this was a, a, a close second best. So Thank you to all of you. Thank you for our speakers. Thank you for our bartenders who joined us for the 50th anniversary and made these delicious cocktails for us. I can't wait to do this with you in person because it will be even more magical, but I hope we brought a little bit of magic into your 2020 tonight. So cheers, everyone. Thank you so, so much. Cheers, guys. Well done, Mitch. Well done, Mitch. Well great job, Mitch. Well done, Suki, Mitch. Suki, Suki. And great job, Suki. Hey, hey, Salute! Hey. Suki! Suki! That's your new name! Cheers, guys! Oh my gosh, Frankie! <laughs> hey, Ian! Uh... Thank you! Cheers! Cheers, Mitch! Cheers, everyone! Hey, guys, too! Good Cheers, job! Thank you very much, folks! Bye. To Kinder! Uh, thanks very awesome much! Awesome evening! Thank you! Cheers, guys! Cheers, everyone! Anyone in West London, be a spy here for the next hour! After fire, after fire, after fire, your trailer happened! Coming down! Coming down! First rum, first rum's on! First rum's on me! You got 57 minutes to get down here! First rum! First rum! I said the first rum's on me! You got kids to look after! And my first rum, I mean the first person! You missed it. The first rum won. <laughs> exactly. The first one rum is on slow. One rum. Of your choice. Of your choice. That's okay. Well, so I'll, I'll get out the car first. We just love them, money. We just love them. See you in a bit. See you in a bit, guys. See you in a bit. Thanks, Thank you so Very much. Love. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, Hazel. Bye, Hazel. Ciao, ciao. Guys, bye. Bye, Jimmy. Bye, Paulino. Ciao, Mitch. Mitch, thank you very much. Salute. Take care. Thank Salute. Thank you. Cheers, yeah. bye. Thanks, everybody. Love you. See you soon. Be Scotty. Cheers, Scotty. Bye. See you, boys, in a minute. Billy, love you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Mitch, uh, well done, mate. <laughs> As discussed earlier, well done. We'll, we'll always try and throw a party wherever we are, <laughs> whatever Good the party. circumstances. <laughs> Night, chaps. Night, Billy. Hey, Mitch, I've got to know, are you sitting in the bar? So there's actually a bar behind your bar? I'm, I'm in the bar at, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Park <laughs> Royal. Right? <laughs> I mean, I'm in the most secret bar in London, so secret you can't even see it right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Uh, but you can show it to us, eh? Yeah, the most this, secret this bar. This is my actual bar. Look at this bar. <laughs> This is, but the, the difference was all of these are whiskeys, whereas all of trailer are rum. So I want to rebuild the Park Royale bar to be a rum, <laughs> the rum bar. <laughs> nice one. I'm so, I'm so glad. Is Jürgen still there? Has he run away already? No, unfortunately he had to go. Uh, like he, um, he was, uh, he was uh, already on a date like uh, eight o'clock. Oh, really? Five, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I made it a little cozy for us, so <laughs> he, he stayed uh, a little while longer, but he left uh, three, four minutes ago. Oh man, what what a sweetheart! Nice. So so today we had a, we had a couple of people in London who who missed their rum samples. So 
we, we ran around, we got their rum samples to them. In Germany, the same thing was happening. Like it was just like, that, that for me is what the rum community is all about. Like everyone's just like making sure everyone's got something to drink. So. Yeah, me and you are like really close and uh, we know each other since years and like big, big buddies. So uh, that was not like a really big deal. So even like, the, the, the funny stuff is like he was already on the way to Munich uh, for like kind of a holiday, kind of short holiday breaks, kind of. So uh, he was like, yeah, okay, I'll bring you, I bring you the sample. I got it in the afternoon as a package. So I bring it to you. Not too bad at the then as, then his wife said, yeah, like, when we come, you have to make a, a, a drink to go. I say, I can't make a drink to go. I don't have any stuff, but you can uh, you can join in for a bottle of wine or whatever. And yeah, now we, after a few bottles of wine and after a few sips of rum, they unfortunately finally had finally had to left. But it uh, it was a real uh, pleasure uh, to to listen to all of you guys and uh, to have some. Uh, Awesome rounds with you, and yeah, thanks a lot for this uh, very nice evening. Yeah, especially right now, thank you. Uh, it's not so, I'm not so, so glad we right now. I love, I love as well. I love the end of the training where it's like these diehards are still here. Either they've fallen asleep or they're still drinking. So we can, <laughs> you can only tell if you've got your video on, if you're one of the diehards, or if you've actually fallen asleep. <laughs> I've been on that Zoom. Mark, what's not in the room? No one's asleep. We have a special guest. One of our viewers is coming freshly to the bar, which I'm going to stay socially distanced from. Born <laughs> Davies. We have a special guest. Hey, we're right. 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 Hey, we we I think Dawn's going to come down to trailer. Oh, Dawn's coming down? Yeah. Tell us what's happening. Dawn, you need to come to trailer. Uh, I think security. Dawn, come to trailer. Let's go. Let's do it. Guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so thank much. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. Thanks thank for coming. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. See ya.